them for all salon people and then party them. There at their media, we'll be bringing you a variety of programs ranging from documentaries to discussions, interviews, news, views, sports and entertainment. Our programs will contain matters on development, governance, the economy and issues that are of importance to Sierra Leone. So, no left BNO because we get Bebe Bebe program then like Salon Discussion, Meets the Ministers, the President's Hour and the Gladi Gladi program, Look Me, I Look You. All this, they start soon na www.sarajemmedia.org. Na who's term this? The total population of Sierra Leone in 2019 was stated approximately at 7.8 million. And the most common cancer reported in 2018 was breast cancer, with an incidence rate of 25.1% and a mortality rate of 19.2%. Ward 2 at the Connaught Hospital Freetown is a female surgical ward that cares for patients requiring breast surgery, chemotherapy, and palliative care. General surgery also admits to the ward as see fit. The ward is in need of a significant refurbishment and has a major impact on patient assessment and delivery of treatment, dignity, comfort, and infection control measures. The current ward area presents a significant challenge to infection control. There is no fit for purpose or adequate personal hygiene facilities. The showers and sanitary areas are in poor condition and are difficult to clean. The flooring is deteriorated. Overall deco and fabric of the walls need repair and full decoration. Furniture, cupboards and shelving require replacement. The sluice, known to be the dirty utility room, is in poor condition and needs replacing. Windows need to be replaced as current windows bring in droughts, dust, debris, mosquitoes and rodents. There is no designated area to provide a day service for patients receiving chemotherapy. Medical supplies is desperately needed. Therefore, we need a total amount of £15,000 which is equivalent to 195 million leons for this project. This project will focus on women diagnosed with breast cancer and other non-malignant breast abnormalities requiring one or more of the treatment modalities that are currently available. We will also set up a day unit for the administration of chemotherapy and provide training and development to ensure sustainability. Therefore, I am pleading to all individuals, organizations, and local businesses, and every Sierra Leonean and friends of Sierra Leone to make a meaningful contribution that will never go in vain. Ways to contribute will be seen at the end of this clip. I am Isata Sisejalo of the Health Show Partnership Program. Remember, your health is your wealth.
Hill Valley Academy is a school that provides the very best opportunities for our students to develop, grow and mature into young adults who are encouraged to become patriots as well as global citizens. We have high expectations and ambitions for all our students. We provide a caring, supportive, tolerant and challenging environment in which all individuals can grow and flourish. A graduate of Hill Valley Academy is a well-rounded human being capable of making the most of what life has to offer. We actively encourage academic excellence with a sense of responsibility. We look forward to welcoming you to our school and to meeting you in the not too distant future because together we achieve the extraordinary. Me na Yvonne Akisoya and 11th May 2021 make me three years we are on day in office. I say let I come and tell Fritonians them una boku boku tenki for way una elect me and wanna give me this mandate for servuna. But I not just want to tell una thank you for when I elect me. I want to tell you thank you for what you don't work with me and work with the councillors, work with the staff of Freetown City Council, work with so many stakeholders, including the central government, the international partners, the local partners. I want to tell Una the Freetonians and thank you, but I want to tell all the other groups and the Boku Boku thank you. Together, we embark on a journey for Transform Freetown and in nobody not being say it go easy. We published the plan in January 2019. And then in January 2020, we published the first year report. And then in January 2021, we don't publish the two year report. Inside the reports and day, you go able for read in much more detail, waiting and waiting we don't achieve. But family them, I still I'll just share today some of the things that really make me heart glad for this work here. One thing we're really, really glad about now the wastewater treatment plant where we don't build na King Tom. This is the first time ever in the history of Salon for let we get dentine with the common the toilet. Instead of it just going to grow na King Tom, it actually they go into a plant where they get for separate the solid from the liquid and get for three time and waiting there for commot can go towards manual. It can now be safely the, the liquid can now safely be disposed into the waterways. Another practical thing we are so glad for that this urban farming project we bring over 300. In fact, we start with 300. Now we add another 200 women them. We now let them backyard them and at in community level, particularly in the private communities. I can create this. Okay. Where you get? Okay. You awkward, they come up. Okay. If they will plant up. The women they, they, they do farming projects. We go benefit them, then picking them, forget more nutritious food, but you go also help them forget small things at the end as they sell them in the market. And then that nursery school. Fumble then go no say we've been not open the one at Congo water market for make vulnerable women them and then you picking it under the age of five, get free quality preschool care. And now we dip and build the second one. We do refurbishment upstairs in the Christian Road Market. And that, that facility will be open and available to women and men traders inside Christian Road Market. Tricycles. Well, then tricycle and they not only then they help for keep with city clean, they also they create employment. We don't create so far over 1,200 jobs with young people then where they go and collect dirty na the streets. And now we get 90 more where they come on stream. So I'm so happy because it increased the capacity for collect dirty. At the same time, it increased the number of people them, young people that we get work. Let not talk. And not talk about the transfer station when I did the dirty then they go. So we don't get four additional ones, including the one at Lomley, the one at approved school, the one at Shell, and the one at Allen Tong. Bele Uman them, then they all over with community. That journey for going at PCMH, it can challenge Boko of them. So we did work for upgrade five of we page use them for make them be monk, side with side Bele Uman, they able for born. 
Free tongue people, then boku boku people, then no say dog na challenge na this city. And so we don't start a program for sterilize, vaccinate the dogs them, so that we go get control over dogs and we the ambog motorman, but we the ambog themselves. We go make we city healthier and you go reduce the risk for let people then get us sick with and call rabies. I don't share small about wait a wait we don't do and over these three years, but I just touch. The thing in Boku, I go say, anybody we want for no more. Also go now with Facebook page. We get Freetown City Council Facebook page. We also get Yvonne Akisoya, Mayor of Freetown. You go able for follow we. Let we continue for work together with all we stakeholders. For let collectively we transform Freetown. Una, thank you and God bless you. Greetings, everybody. Unakushe unakabo, njara matanala, mambena buwa bisie. Greetings to everybody and welcome one more time to the Culture Show. Me na Yusifu Jalo. And today's show, we want for look and celebrate African literature, African writers. This na Black History Month, October, and we want to look at African literature and African history or African history through the plenty writers them where we get all over Africa. We have to look some from Sierra Leone, a few from Ghana, Nigeria, um, Kenya, even South Africa. We will look quite a few writers there. And I'm sure plenty from Una we see them here, so we the watch inside their bully right now. We don't join we inside this bully. I am sure Una says get other writers them or other literature we wanna don't read from other writers them. We really um change in our mind or influence in our mind tremendously. So today let me check who that we get inside the abule. Let me check. Who that we get na the abule? Hey, we get Mr. Joseph Congo Nani Matia, all the way from Moritan Barracks. Welcome inside the abule. Who that else we get inside the abule? We get Melvin Shati. Melvin Shati, welcome inside this abule. We're glad to see you. We've got Hamza, you said they inside the abule as well. And Hamza, um, I know for you said for me one probably guess them, but we will definitely get in touch with you. I know see there you get small two three and um, network wahala na salonde. But it's all right. We still want you inside the abule. But not only that, let me see what that we get inside this abule. Yeah, so Martha Bangura, Martha Bangura will get you inside the abule, push and cabo, Martha Erono B. Greetings to you. Welcome inside the Abuli. Bernice Langley. Bernice Langley. Welcome inside the Abuli. Well, my people, share this, uh, share this round, share this link round because we are going to share some very, very important information, um, nostalgic information, and we want to analyze so many things about we um, literature. You see, it is said that the success of failure of any community, any person, any family, any country, you success or failure, it they entirely dependent on the kind of narrative 
or the kind of story where you conceive, where you perceive, where you believe, where you accept, and where you eventually act upon. So, whose kind of story, whose kind of narrative where we, African people, have been accepting, believing, perceiving, accepting, you know, acting upon all these years? What kind of story? Part of those stories is embedded in our narratives, in the novels, in the stories, in the books that many of our writers have, 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 have written in the past. So, without much ado, uh, Martha Aronobi, uh, you know, Melvin Shati and Bernice, let me greet you all in the Abule style, the culture show style. me guess them when we get because today I'm going to waste them longer. One, let me guess them. Come on, let me talk about some of the most exciting things that we'll be glad for literature, English literature, African literature, Greek literature. Inside Sierra Leone, we learn all. Inside Africa, we learn all. Well, let me catch you them today. So, me, I'm so excited about this, and I'm sure Una said with inside their bullet, Una said gladly for join for can share. I would like for read, um, for Una said share waiting, Una said don't read before the books that Una don't read, Una share them inside their bullet. Then we all learn together, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> because just as Okonko will say, when you, when you get trained, you're welcome, you know, let me shave the cola not, let me shave the cola, eh? let me drink some palm wine, eat some cola, let me get some peace, let me all sit down, cola not now for peace, let me shave them, let me drink some mampama, mm -hmm. some palm wine, some poyo, let me drink, now let me see, let me say that safu one. So make a introduce me guest to una. Tonight, tonight, me guest the wagget. First of all, make a begin from the youngest, then I go come up to the elders. The youngest who we get today is a prolific writer, we tap Nasserelio. Really ambitious, intelligent young man. We in books them at the moment Nasserelio really did make big, 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 big bell noise Nasserelio right now. And this young man, he is none other than Mr. Hamza Kuruma. But, uh, uh, you know, young man Hamza, we are big. Say hello to me, family. Yes. Una, una do, una do, una do. How can I do sign? Very well, very well. Well, um, Hamza, definitely we will come to you again very soon for a little bit more about your books, okay. then we save the right. And also, we will like for okay. you about some of these, the other novels that we don't read in the past of, on African writers. Well, the next one we want to come to. Okay. Now, we want okay. and only, yeah, this one here, so in legendary in many different ways because this next guest we are for country this tona in papa na be remarkable man na Sierra Leone. in papa na be prolific writer it, one of the best playwrights the Sierra Leone don't ever um produce prolific man uh in terms of what he believe in convictions and so on now he born this wonderful daughter by the name of nadia madi Hello, hello everybody. Hello, hello. Una kushe, una kabo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't say that, no go do well. But we will come to you very soon because you daddy want for talk, but I'm little bit and some of the things that we itself don't do and what books that we don't publish. Well, the next guest they were one for introduce to now, me family. This one, um, well, between the two of them, I don't know which one first way for introduce, but I will go for the say ladies first. So make I introduce somebody with an idea friend to me. A dear, dear, dear friend. I'm a big sister. I mean, somebody we don't travel with me through the trenches. We don't sit down, we don't enjoy it together. I'm a young tongue, na kamakui. We don't go day, mambina fest. We don't dance together. None other winner, a judge, an actress, 
a writer, um, like she's just an all-rounder, somebody who is so passionate, so kind as well. Please, mm. dear Beguna, welcome. Or make I do this to now, the one and only Annie Domingo. Hey, I'm not sure. Uh, you see, you see, if you don't bring me up, can I ask someone else who can talk about the book? So I hope say we get plenty things for telling our way on go enjoy and share uh, with me. Come on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, we next guest will we get. Now one way you don't day on this on this but on the culture show quite a number of times and a regular person with a lot of wisdom, with immense knowledge on so many aspects of African culture. And, uh, you know, I can't do this show without bringing on somebody like I'm for lazy, can share his FU. I've been mean, teacher as well as Sierra Leone. We, um, we don't write um, quite a few uh, uh, um, publications, not publication, but a lot of research as well. He's just a prolific researcher. And, um, and so with immense knowledge on African literature. We are big. Make I introduce to now the one and only the man who we call foot of state, <laughs> Mr. Jalo Jamboria. Well, um, thank you very much, uh, my compatriot uh, Yusuf. I'm glad you for there back this evening, and I hope she will contribute. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, with that, make I introduce the one and only king himself, the king of the show. He is the one and only King Mufasa. Hi, hello, Nakusha Nakavo. I'm not saying say king. I'm not making much. You don't the king. Not the king. The king there. But yes, of course, the king Mufasa himself is here to say hello and welcome. Well, Usai, you get beaucoup people are really right now for listening. And you know, so we can make the kunu sometime. Eh, when I get for be a very small, small old. But today is an opportunity for let us see and capture the attention of so many interesting things that we are free to see will be of high relevance to me as a filmmaker. So I'm watching and I'm keenly listening to all the discussions we really unfold. Now the culture show with education today, when one of the key platform, black sheep, however you might call them, watch and see. Make one of us say, Salon still gets a lot for offer and the diaspora is still the place we will go tap into for make sure, see, we sort out so many of the gaps in within a salon. But never mind, we still get one prolific young man. We also get for kind nyaka nyaka we, because we know for say the systems of the old and the new and the young and the archaic, all get for be an element of progress in a salon. And that's what don't start to. Education is the key. But also you get for friend money back as well. Otherwise, education not gonna be of nothing to you. But not forget to be friend money. No left me no get small education is very important i hated literature in the past i never liked it but no way. i don't no have a choice i have to read and listen so i switched myself into it at some point in my career and that's why i'm here today so over to you yusuf okay. well first of all let me say everybody in the abule let me check again some new people who don't join us at abule haja aibari Thank you very much. We don't join you inside the Abuli. Um, Mother Aeronobi actually is, um, don't bring, you know, already don't point out a few books, them where sometimes some of you don't read. I remember Dilemma of a Ghost. Dilemma of a Ghost. Now, one book we already don't, um, Mother don't, don't mention as well. Um, what is it? Meet Me in Conakry. Now, the book that one, Meet Me in Conakry is another book. Well, maybe you could share a little bit with Andy. Um, uh, we say, uh, oh, oh, Bayana, Bayana by Kamara as well. He said, don't, don't, you know, cushion to you, greetings to you. You don't join inside Abule. Um, Charles Broad, um, he says, I think the only Sierra Leonean king is Adebayo. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man, don't argue that one day at all, okay? <laughs> all right, um, sequence, Dumbuya, thank you for joining us in, and so on. Now, literature let me talk now about literature first of all i want to give each panelist um with a just a brief introduction about which book um or what can take you into literature what to make you interested in literature make a take and make a begin utuna first of all i'll go on for begin with the um with uh with the um with the main elder first of all if i come to the younger ones then so make a start with you uh mr jamboria 
English literature. Well, let me not say English literature, African literature, I beg your pardon. African literature. What in take you into one? What in are your earliest memories of African literature? Thank you. Um literature of course that's something we are not only studying at school and university i also teach them i teach them for over seven years because of the 13 years we are teaching us here leon i mean they teach mostly english language and literature in english of course i did an analysis of things fall apart at the time we even be part of the yx syllabus Okay, and that was sold widely in West Africa. Charlie Afuna sells some for me in Gambia, some other people sell other side. You see, literature is part of the ethical structure of society. What is the ethical structure? Writers of literature in every culture. Now, people know they manifest a lot of things about the culture where they grew up in and where they live in. And in most cases, some writers, or most writers, I would say, in the African continent in the 20th century, used literature as a conduit for expressing a lot of frustrations of the societies where they grew up. One point where I think we can forget at the back of mind where they go through this discussion is that every writer they write according to in experience and in perception of life now i make way they study literature the first task we get to do now for study the background of the writer because that they give you a lot of deep insight for understand the themes and the purpose of his writing so if we uh, talk about literature today, like there are other topics so we don't they deal with on culture, I think so this is a very, very important part for me. We begin to revisit with history, some of the things that now with society where our shortcomings, and we can even use literature, like we are a playwright or so, for teach society about the things them what can do for go forward. Some writers, some people can be writers, others can be oral literature people. Like Adebayo, where they say, not the best writer. Yes, maybe for his own class. You see, let not dismiss people, them. Let not dismiss issues. He has his own way. He has his own level and everything of expressing what he expresses. And I think for in level is a success case. So also like uh, Nadia Madi in Papa, at the time when I be a playwright, certain sectors of society in Sierra Leone been seen as a radical. Like I don't see some of we as radicals. Me of course stated that I'm the radical. I don't care. Okay. Nobody can make me what I want to be. I make myself. If you like me, okay. If you don't like me, it's your business. <laughs> but can I, but, can <laughs> I, I just finish that? So, I want, I want at the time when Nadia and Papa been the right, yeah. he had problems with the status quo. He had problems with the system that some of us were aware of. But when you meet him and talk to him, you see a different person, a gentleman. Because I met him several times in the 70s before he had to run away from Sierra Leone. You see, this is what literature is. It's some kind of infrastructure in society where they guide society in ethics, in morals, and a lot of other things. Some of it, of course, is historical narratives. In the Malinke, um, the Malinke culture, then get what in and they call jelly. These are people of literature. We've been the day with the leaders for guide them philosophically, then they tell stories, then they tell history, etc. So I go hang and they for sir. Try the other and I self talk. Okay. Um thank you very much. You don't bring two aspects of African literature we very important. One area where we know we become very dominant, that is the 
part of literary in terms of writing, but there's the, also the other part of literature, which is the spoken word literature, yeah. where you bring what you mentioned about the jelly, or some people will say jelly, or some in Sierra Leone will say jelly bar. That's a very interesting area as well. We hopefully I will let Lewi bring in at some point and discuss. But um, but for now, let me just uh, I want to go over to to Annie Domingo. Um, for you, what in bring you inside literature, and um, and what in are you your own interest in literature? Well, my interest in literature started from a very very early age. I I learned to read very early, but I did not have the kind of books that we have now. I wasn't reading about African literature. I was reading all the things that was there available for me in the Sierra Leone library or library at school or within our um, at house. So and the comics and sort of things. It's only later on, and that was when I got to secondary school that we started looking at um, African literature. I remember things fell apart. No longer at ease you know um cry the beloved country and so on and then you start seeing that there are other stories that that are not being told and where i could see myself and then as i as i grew in my knowledge and i came to to england to go to college to university i started looking at more african literature they had the they had the the, the series i can remember the penguin books we used to have those penguin books the thin ones that they had some of them were the orange and then we had the black ones <laughs> and one of the, the green ones and then so you start to buying them and getting them together so now there's so many more african writers to go into african literature but for a while i concentrated also in on black literature so the american literature black american because there were, there were far more of those for me to see especially from the women, because a lot of the African stories that I was seeing were from the man's point of view. And although we're talking about um, American women, there was something that um, was the same for us as women and as black women, even though some of their, um, some of their situation was different. So, you know, and that, I, but even as a child, I was writing because I wanted to tell stories. I used to tell stories to my brothers. I used to tell stories at school and so on, and through plays or to, through uh, um, novels or just sit down and talk. They tell story. So words and literature have always been part of what I was interested in, what I studied, what I now teach, um, of what I write. Uh, you know, literature is there because telling our stories from our point of view um, is very important. You know, we we need to know what the gaze is too many for too long other people are telling our stories and putting their twist on it and it's now time for us to tell our stories our way and our truth so i'm going to for now um telling stories our way our truth nadia how i mean what does that mean for you in getting into literature um <clears throat> well yeah i mean Obviously, the things things I think I think it has changed in on the scene most definitely, um, because we are actually at a point in literature where I personally feel like if we go back to the question that you said, how did everybody get into literature? You know, me I be me I be all speaking, and I'm go no way. So I go I go school na salon, I go school na England. Why did go school na salon? I sat in the house and I read, my grandmother had eight kids and all of them went to school. They all go to college, all of this. So there were tons of books in the house that I read. When I go to school, then they make with do Chinua Achebe and, and, and all of that. So the, 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 the Africa, the two books that we did at school were uh, for academic purposes. And then because of my papa and his politics, you know, it was kind of tedious for a child. Okay, I'm reading about you and, you know, it's all terrible and the colonialism. And then my dad is going on about it and all his actor friends and the writers, everybody's going. So for me, it was like, okay, yes. And then when I, when I have my respite, it's actually the English literature was the respite and the African literature was the political stuff. 
the only time, the time when I actually bumped into African literature was when I read Ben Okri's uh, novel, The Famished Road, where he's, suddenly I'm reading a book about a, a beginning with a C, right? It is C. And I was in complete shock because this man was winning all kinds of awards. And I'm thinking, all these white people are giving him awards for so it was beginning with a C. What do they know about this stuff? How do they know? How do they even understand? That was my first understanding that black people could, or African people could write about something that actually wasn't political. They could write about their life, their ordinary life. But that was the first and only book. After that, it just continued with the politics. Uh, so that's how I saw African literature defined through politics and oppression. And as Annie said, I didn't even think about women writers until this whole Alice Walker thing started happening. And then I started to read about women, uh, just as a woman reading about women. Oh, okay, and she's black. Okay, so then there's that connection there. So I feel like, um, you know, there's been different segments as we've come along in society where we kind of, shoveling our way through different eras of what we are writing according to the, 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 the experiences, the cohort experiences of colonialism and then the Pan-Africanism. And then that's uh, what I've kind of started to notice, you know. Uh, and now, suddenly now we can write the boring stories about Maya Marigote Kwata and we can make it amazing. But before that, nobody had that. It seemed like there was no choice. That was not what was coming out because of the experiences of, of with him, you know, being happy. So, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll leave it there for now. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Um, um, uh, I don't know if Hamza is still on um, for me. I know Hamza is really struggling because as a young man, I'd love to know as well what, um, what brought Hamza himself again into literature. And I know you also hear a writer as well. But for you, same question. What brought you into literature before we're going to look at the different um, writers, African writers that we have and, let us, um, and, let, and let's celebrate them a little bit. Let's look at what they have written themselves. But first, Hamza, um, what was it for you? Well, uh, for me, uh, writing is all about representation. Writing is all about inspiring the youth in Sierra Leone. And also, writing in Sierra Leone is very difficult because of my uh, own way of writing was to change the narratives and to change the trajectory in Sierra Leone. I came to realize that in Sierra Leone, so many youths are actually not concentrating on literature, but most times they're using education for, um, for their own selfish gains. Let me be nice. Literature is something that we give back to society. I could do a lot more by not only targeting, the, targeting my colleagues, but targeting the future generation. So um, there are so many books that have, have inspired me in my journey. I start with Sly Chinikoka and that of myopia and also with the ambassadors of poverty and so many points I, I, I've read and as well as um, my great book, Things Fall Apart. So I want to tell the African story in my own way. I want to change the narrative in Sierra Leone. Therefore, I want youths to come up and then step up and write their own story, not to wait for them to get older and start writing their stories. Because I believe that if we can do it, if I can do it, each and everyone in Sierra Leone can do it. And that's why I keep writing and I keep writing so I can change the narratives of Sierra Leone. Wow. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think, you know, I want to move on to another thing now. I just want to look at writers, writers that influenced us. Um, let us, again, I'm going to start from, um, from uh, Mr. Jalo Jamboria. Um, what writers influenced your thinking? Um, you know, have they influenced you how you are right now? Or what writers, what writers were you? Because I know, I, maybe let me start with me. Um, maybe one of the, the writers that influenced me 
um, as a young man, the African writer who influenced me was Aiko Yama. Um, I don't know how many from I gained with no Aiko Yama, but the Aiko Yama. The beautiful ones are not yet born. Exactly, wrote the beautiful ones are not yet, but not yet I born. I think she was Minister of Education at some point in Ghana. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do not know that far, but the book itself really um, introduced me to the uh, just the decadence and the nastiness of corruption. And when I read that book, the I now get no confusion as to what in corruption be. She was the intellectual at the bio. Yes. <laughs> and I think that a book they uh, get a lot of buffin language. <laughs> yes. I mean, so much imagery in the book. I mean, if we begin to analyze, if we begin to analyze that book, the uh, in terms of how Aikoyama used imagery for bring forward in points. It's just a phenomenal uh, um, story. But uh, one of the books, them, I mean, there's quite a few others, other books like uh, like uh, um, Song of Lawino and Song of La um, Achole. Of Kot Bitek. Of Bitek. Another amazing book as well. You know, writers like this one um, influenced me quite strongly as well. And I must say as well, while we are on it, um, this other book, yes, so. Now, Nadia, I'm sure you're going to know this book. This one, Okay. Basa. <laughs> and other plays. <laughs> Basai and other plays. Um, <laughs> Amadou Madi. Now, so for me, books selected like this really take me on. And so me, me, African literature, the writers them where I first encounter literally introduced me into politics, <laughs> into the politics of, um, you know, of, of Africa. That's the one of the big things. So for you, Mr. Boye, which one then for you? Well, of course, I get several writers them across the board will be influenced me thinking. But I guess for be honest, I became attracted to literature for some other purpose. And that is what made me what I am now, the radical. At an early age where I've been, they grew up in Asungu, I had the opportunity to mix across the board. That was in the 60s, late 50s, early 60s, of course, as I said before, I saw independence. Then we load with Asungu train, we come. Water Street, Water Street, we go, we go, look independence. That I mean, a small bubble, but I be understand all things. At that early age, I, sat, I started seeing society for what it is, the inequalities in society. Then I can begin to read books then of African writers. Then then they will be get PZ then get the African writer series, then get the shelf, they then be the sell them 20 cents. Me weekend money, then be the give me every weekend that they go buy one, I go read. Reading these books, they inspire me for begin to understand, say, society, not to the way where I see them. I was born into and grew up in a middle class family. It's like, we had everything. Then people been there will not get. But I had friends with these people, and uh, most of the time I had to be like being the nice guy to them. I begin ask myself certain questions. Then suddenly, at certain point, I play with somebody. Where somebody tell me say I know for play with. I say what in you say now you slave. I say what well, what you mean by slave. That changed my whole life. That day, I became a changed person. I saw the inequalities in humanity. And they get an annoyance in me with it, they get. And so if we talk about literature, it's not only about reading books, look, reading about writers, but my main concern had always been what is the story this guy is telling about humanity? So for me, literature is a form of philosophy. And I don't read plenty of writers. I'm not able to name the all now. So I go left and the first for now, sir. 
Okay. Um, I think I will say the same question for you, um, Ani Domingo, in terms of write, um, African writers then. Is there anyone we you don't read way influence your thinking at all that you'd like to share with me? Well, um, to start with, the first early ones I, I read was people like um, Chim um, uh, Chinua and uh, people like Wole Shoyinka and so on. And they started sort of making you think about that whole thing that we were just talking about, the village life and the town life. Because I lived in the town and it was how people saw each other. And you start thinking about what does that mean? You know, when we're growing up, people that come from up country, come for come men, pass it on. Are you thinking, what, what does that mean for that child? What does that mean for those people? And we started looking at some of those stories. Then um, when, I, when I came back to England, one of the people I met, writers that really influenced me was Bucci and Machita. When we started looking at her book and she was writing about her life coming into England and having those children to look after and what it meant to her. And you start looking at it from a different point of view. Again, she's one of the first women writers, African women writers that I, was read, uh, I started reading. And she wrote several of those books and I met her and could talk about it. I mean, there were, there were lots of different books that you were reading at, at that time. So all of them give you ideas and started you to think. There were books, uh, um, uh, one, uh, Steve Biko, I read something by Steve Biko. There was, um, uh, Kofi, Kofi Awuno, uh, uh, the books. You know, so there were lots of different things that were giving me from different parts of the world, uh, different parts of Africa, different ideas where you start thinking about how do we all see different things. You know, when they talk about Africa, they, they lump us all together as if we were one people, but we are many peoples as well as the one. And you're seeing but the similarities and 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 the differences. I mean, I remember um, oh, whip not child. That 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 was one that oh, you know you start thinking about uh, some of the things. So there are lots of different people, different writers that you you dip into and you come out of and you start thinking because they start opening different ideas about different countries. But also, who are you? Where do we, what are, what is the, what are the similarities? And then what are the differences and how do we live with those differences and how do we accept each other and see and then sort of as we go as you get older you have people like Chimamanda and then Okri and so on and, and those books but the early ones would be those I mean that's a very interesting uh, uh, point you're making there looking what would you look the older writers them you know um, versus the younger writers them today or current writers today yeah. Uh, I would like, but first of all, I just, you know, let just go a little bit looking at the their older writers than they. Um, what he may find out from their old writers than they, uh, that their eras, as Nadia already pointed out, their era, um, not the time of independence, not the time of negritude. If we read poems then from Leopold Seda Senghor, for example, Black is Beautiful, you know, those are the kind of poems, you know, um, where, you, where you go read, kind of literature where you go read. And, uh, and when you read the literature, it was all mostly about um, asserting we own identity as African people. When, um, and with the struggle we've been at that time, you read books like Rosa Albert, for example, um, Atul Fugan. When you read that, and they again, other amazing book, again, where they talk about the struggles and way we've been to go through. Now, as I say, these books have thoroughly influenced my life um, politically and opened me for make I become much more. Um, aware, but I want let me dig. I want let me dig a um, little bit more and talk about some of these books. The more in in uh, uh, specifically maybe um, Nadia. I, I'll go more. I'll go to you on this one. Um, a book where probably you read where you do, where you will say this book gets a profound influence on you and why. Okay, so because, um, uh, you know, as I say, the, the Chinua Achebe and all of that a lot are, are in a learner class. And to be quite honest with you, I found it very uninspiring, not the book, but the way I was taught African literature in Sierra Leone had to be one of the most uninspiring times of my life. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on right there. That's not very... It was uninspiring. 
Okay, hold on. Just hold on for me there. I let that point that we bring so, and I want to explore that because <laughs> I did come back to you. But Hamza, I want to address that question there today as a young man teaching literature in Sierra Leone. How inspiring it is! And I did talk Sierra Leone. You as a young man, you mute. Can you unmute? Hamza, please unmute. Unmute, Hamza. Okay, sorry about that. So teaching literature in Sierra Leone, it's kind of a burden zone because most of the time, students only read what is being given to them. And for example, we are living in a time where students now are focusing more on that of our post-independence um, writers. Like, um, I would say, in Sierra Leone, we only read books that have been given to us. Students do not go the extra hand to find about other writers. Like, um, I took note because of I was not raised in Sierra Leone. I was raised in the Gambia. And in the Gambia, where it's, just a, it's, it's just an it's autoric, autoric, um, autocratic state under the rule of the Jamaica for 122 years. So at that particular time, I realized that uh, the Gambians do not have Ah, okay. Um, for we're some lost. reason, we're lost. Some reason the, 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 the power, the will okay. to speak against the government um, challenge. So normally, what they do? Okay. Yes, carry on, carry on. Are you with me? Yes, we're with you. We lost you for a yes, moment. So normally, what they do? So in an autocratic state where I grew up. Okay. Um, meanwhile, um, Hamza, your network, we are losing you a little bit here. In the Gambia, we normally have um, literary... <laughs> okay, because we're literary losing books. Hamza, um, let me go back to Nadia. Nadia, please continue explaining your point. Because so I wanted... That was being given to every student. Okay. okay. Hamza is going to have to wait. Let us go to I'm let sorry, go. Hamza. <laughs> Okay, let's go over to you, Nadia. Hamza, your network is a little bit, um, is breaking up, so let's hold on a little bit with you. Let's go to Nadia. Nadia, please continue your point. I only wanted to, I, I want to hold that point a little bit as to how they teach literature, because that is a very important point where they drop we interest by African I literature. I tell you right now, me inspiration yes. for right, eh? me inspiration for right, me inspiration for capture, salon life me inspiration for capture Syrian yeah. women me inspiration for capture food culture whatever it did not come from going for being in a classroom learning literature in Sierra Leone you know what say the inspiration come out but the people there will be the wash me close the, the the people there will be sit outside me, me grandpa the people there will be they can't talk to me grandpa while I see the cell me not that is where my inspiration came from not I think we came from the same background, ma. The vexation of inequalities in society. <laughs> so that's that's where my inspiration came from. It did not come from the classroom. And if you're waiting for that, you'll be waiting forever. But anyway, so the I, I can't really comment on the other African writers. But what I can say to you is, we are writing books, no past, no present, no future. I think it was about nine when the pa go on come salon. The, the pa end up go prison under Shaka Stevens. He was in prison, and then they let him out, and then he went away to uh, England as an exile, and um, he ended up in hospital. But then for caught him belly. I don't know what they did to him or what food they gave him or whether they poisoned him, but basically he was in hospital. And when he was in hospital, I remember being given his book and being told, oh, you know, your dad's a writer, here's this book. And then I read No Past, No Present, No Future, which is about three uh, men leaving, not Syria, because it was a, a, a kind of like a, an African country with another name, but leaving that country and coming, going to the, live in England. And um, basically between all three men, their dreams, hopes and aspirations crashed due to the way that they had left the country, the kind of families that they'd come from, that arriving, the expectations of waiting dinner, this wonderful England, yeah, the way that they were received and the whole confusion that went with that, how it all ended up crashing. So I'm looking at my father in the bed, having to visit him 
and seeing him in this state, knowing that in Sierra Leone, with the whole wonderful independence that happened and ended up being shit, to having to leave because most people don't want to leave, but we have to leave because something is always better and brighter, which is not our fault. So having to end up in somewhere where you're dealing with all of this other rejection and no, it's not good enough and this and that, and knowing that you'll never really have some kind of control of your life because of waiting you people and on do you inside your country and waiting the other one and it waits for, for do you when you reach and somebody else in country. So the reading the book and seeing the physicality of what, hap of what was happening make our understand say, or look, looking around at everybody who was like me, for make you understand say, not necessarily that uh, uh, it kind of was, it was like, it, was, it wasn't like, uh, okay, it, we're all doomed you know, the African leaders, they're, they're useless, and then we kind of, and then there's racism, but it was kind of like, you know what, in As African people, as Salon people, there's a lot of complexity, a lot of complexity. You tribe, you man, you, you bo, you bondo, you this, you that, all of this complexity that we carry with us that actually we, if we nurtured it, if we nurtured ourselves, you know, if you end up in Gambia or if you end up in South Africa or if you end up, uh, you know, in New Zealand, you're carrying it all with you. But it's only when you look inside yourself and recognize the complexity and richness within inside you, that's the only way you're going to find some solace whilst you wait for them where they take over and become president all this for them to get their act together actually now you, never. now you get to solve the problem because governments never will so as we walk yeah. around in complexities and not of us say we have to be sad that some 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 of us are uh, in no man's land no we are here to move forward we're here to bring forward so you know it no matter whether you did gambia or you did you know senegal or whatever it's you what i learned was it's you but it depends on how you look at you in that complexity the way you get if you're not limba you're not creole you know you know you know you know uh, um, i don't know you, you know all all the, the you it's all you I don't wow. know if I'm... So, I, yes, I think, <laughs> I think you make your point very clearly that in no past, no present, no future, again, for many of whom I wish to tell you know, over year about this book or come across this book, this is one of the great books that we, um, uh, Yulisa Amadumadi write, No Past, No Present, No Future. Very good book um, for read. And, and I think them books, they also get a lot of relevance to the big time. Just as Nadia, they talk about this, this book, they address you, the individual. And when we look at Sierra Leone, we look at Africa um, on the whole, a book like this, the message is then very quite clear. Only you, when, as Michael Jackson said, man in the mirror, woman in the mirror, look at you. When you sort you out, the rest of the world um, <laughs> more or less will sort out for a book like that. But now, let come down to Hamza again, because I know say you, you network with the break um, earlier on. Yeah. Please, Hamza. Yes. Um, so let me talk about, you, you talk about literature, you refer to Gambia, what is the talent in Gambia day and so on. Please continue on for the four weeks. So um, if I take the question back, what you say, what is the difference between African literature, what you would learn and why you're you know, not passionate about the literature? I would say the literature in uh, Gambia, because uh, Gambia uh, study, and also I can learn some uh, Sierra Leone. I realized that the teaching, we didn't teach literature, one, it's boring, and two, it's somehow direct. Like then you go tell the beginning and say, when I go study for pass, 
but they know the story for capture the feeling. So there is no feeling in it. So if you don't know, get uh, the inspiration, you never know, able to do what they say they write when it comes to literature. In fact, you can see most of the time, people actually look in, um, they don't like literature in the sense that when time for literature reach, then they go out of the class. When time for literature reach, then they go out of the class. They know the day of the class. The reason being, then they say, ah, that's the way again. I just for can't sit down no more, for can't talk to people. So like the perception was there. Unlike the olden days literature, my mom didn't tell me, he said you don't read uh, different books then. Like uh, um, this uh, um, book them about uh, um, Chino Achebe, he talked about also Macbeth. He said these are books the way they cram word for word. He said, and as well, then he asked them, then he asked these books them. So we didn't say don't um, graduate. When they step down come to the universe, you realize it and they get love for them. Even though if they don't get the time for it, but they get love for them, they will put you in a house every evening, then they explain for which chapter by chapter inside the book, even without the non-holy book. So that was so impressive. Unlike, the, uh, unlike nowadays, this generation here, yeah, you don't get any um, 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 person where he goes to nap, he say, this book here, yeah, I don't get it offhand. Like I'm, I can narrate them. Because why the love not the day, and the manner in which they teach them, you know, actually favorable. So what I will actually say for many people and get this love again. If they begin to see young people and they go into literature, then they write books them and speak out how uh, what in them feel, and then they come in a situation where they're not the only use the literature for um inspire others, but then they use the literature as a truth for representation. Like most of my work, the way I don't do the letter to my ancestor and then um the alternative development, you realize that all in all of these books, I'm calling out the government in all of these books. I'm trying to point out the plight of the youth. So therefore, I try to tell people and say, literature is not all about reading and passing in schools, but literature is about your feeling. And our literature has been the very reason why this world is in transformation. Because if Thomas Hobbes, John Locke, and then other African writers didn't put out their work, then definitely um, uh, the system we're having right now in the world it, it, it wouldn't have been um, applicable. Look at all the works Aristotle uh, and, and put. You look at Socrates, his ideas. So I try to tell people and say, Sierra Leoneans have great thinkers. Sierra Leoneans have great people that can think. In fact, inside this recent book, where they can put 100 things you need to know about Sierra Leone. I put on, they say, one of the um, Sierra Leoneans and one of the most um, admired uh, um, nationalities there, in a sense that they are very brilliant. That's why if you go to the United Nations, you find so many Sierra Leoneans in there. Because why? The way that they think, and the way that they do things then. So if I, if you, if, if you can imagine the Sierra Leoneans, they wouldn't say then they come into a book, then they can't begin write the ideas then, then definitely change will come inside this country. Yeah. So literature is more than that. So the need for change, the way that they teach literature, literature in a school, and try for put them inside the kingdom, made a love them. Because if we didn't love her, at that end, we should be able to point out great writers then. And I really admire writers then like a Banner Bomb, Hallowell, writers then like a Jody Ali, um, Sierra Leonean writers, they will we get like a Nasu, and then we get the come up one way to come up now, Nafi Mustafa. These are people that are trying, they try very hard for putting ideas, them for put um and works them inside the book. And then, if at all, people and they follow that trend, then definitely Sierra Leone is going to be a country with the celebrity uh, literary uh, works them. Thank you very much. I think a very important <laughs> point you raised, of course, you raised the, the fact that new writers then they come up. Um, today, um, you mentioned, of course, Nasu, Nasu as well. We just don't publish your book. And uh, one day we come later on to the area of publishing because, um, for, uh, uh, you know, we'll come to that area the, of publishing. But still, I want to we look again just at the writers that we get across Africa because this program is about celebrating all those writers in Africa.
But I want for um, I want for take with Fabule because you know let me check um just a few people are with inside the Abule and just well call them um Kadi Kadi um welcome inside the Abule today um Valentine Solomon welcome inside the Abule um Usman Ba welcome inside the Abule um Bayana Golden King welcome inside the Abule and um and of course we get uh you know oh Mr Winston Ford is inside the inside the Abule thank you very much in fact it's great for know that Mr Winston Ford is inside the Abule because um. Uh, he's a publisher, but um, we will come and we will come. And then if I get away, I will talk to the engineers. Maybe we will bring Mr. Winston Ford also as a guest for making safe can talk as well in the area of publishing because we can't talk about books without talking about the publishers. Um, the publishers play a major role in making sure we get books out there. But make a come, um, make a come to you, Mr. Mr. Jamboria. Still, I will ask this question. When you look at the writers them of of old, which one right away for you outstanding? I know self you say you get plenty, but give me one at this point. Say this one when you write this book, it changed my life this way. And how do you think that book day? If young people they read that book day today, how if you say that book day go influence other young people their life, Mister Jamboria? Well, of course the. The writer where be influenced me most was Chino Achebe. Then after him we been get uh, Diop, where he writes the poem, The Vulture. Ah, yes, I remember The Vulture, yes. Then of course, after Diop, we been get um, Soinka, Oli Soinka, the interpreters. Mm -hmm. These were the three things in literature, or the three books in literature, where influenced me thinking. Of course, later on, I've been going to do in-depth studies of uh, Kote Bitek and others. And uh, if for the build-up, waiting I've been don't get as a kind of thematic view from Achebe, Diop, and others. Of course, as I said before, my own issue with literature came from a societal point of view an experience I had in life. And that's been impact a lot of things about the way why they read books and understand them. If I can just deviate a bit and go to what in Amza and uh, Nadia been the try for address. You see, literature teaching is not a boring something if the teacher know what in they go teach. Most of the teachers are not professionals, so therefore they fail. Literature is like religion. If you are teaching literature, you, sh you should always stand in front of the classroom like a pastor or imam. If you don't do your homework, if you know the background of the writer, you know what in influence in writing, you look at young culture, something similar to that, then when you teach, that is how you deliver. And literature teaching is not something that you should restrict to concepts and theories. That's why a lot of people make mistakes. Of course, it's a general problem in Sierra Leone. We're not to the issue of the address today. Sierra Leone is what it is today because we kill education. We are not the professional teachers. We are not say we are clear out. Then say by Lobari, you know, say they be cynical. A lot of my colleagues left the classroom and went to become police officers, etc. We stayed the ground. I stuck there for 13 years. I went months without wage. My first marriage broke down. I suffered a lot of things. There were times I had to work teaching at Prince of Wales School and living at Wellington. I had to walk half the way. I've been getting Ben Sus there. I will come on and look you, Ben Sus. We suffered all of that. And up till now, it has never changed. It's getting worse. But not to. Okay, Mr. Mr. Jamboria, we... Mr. one second. Since you say, I want to. Um, Hamza, you are there. You're in Sierra Leone there. Uh, literature um, teachers, they get Ben Sus today. <laughs> Think they're worse today. <laughs> Today the was then only get Bensus past the give a five for press.
And only so man don't even get switched for work. Now, Amza, Amza, they, now you did not talk day. Five couples and then switch. <laughs> the the best the, 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 they don't reduce now. They don't reduce now. They don't work with you. You sure? They don't work with you. Amza, 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 I'm afraid you're feeling like that. Because now we did see. Yes. Maybe in the private schools they're not get Ben shoes. Exactly. But I'm sure uh, the public the school teachers they get Ben shoes and smell creep. Yes, Jamboria, yeah. What you're continuing talking please, with what you were saying. <laughs> yes, as I they say, you see, the essence of literature. I think if we build up, like Amza, a young man, which he don't talk, I don't see a writer with a lot of um, background cultural experiences for offer society. From what he has just said, I made an assessment about him. And I think his own present plight is the publication side, which of course as you say, we'll go discuss later. Okay? But the, the point is, societies, they grow. Societies, they stagnate, as you rightly said in the beginning, by the kind of narrative. I go advise, say, then begin revisit the teaching of literature in Sierra Leone. Because it's one part to reconstruct that society. It's one part to begin to introduce people back to what was lost, why it was lost, and how we can rebuild it. If we mean from Excel, Leon. Wow. Now, I mean, of course, the, as I say, there was silence, you know, and there was yin yin. Yes. Um, that's Spirit <laughs> pass. <laughs> Spirit pass. There was yin yin. <laughs> um, I think very, you know, somebody is asking a question here. Um, Bayana Bay Kamara is asking. He say, why do we read or write? How did all these writers empower us? And I think a very important point, and which is what I'm trying to drive at. These writers, they move on it. How did they empower us? Um, what impact has their writing, um, you know, improved in our lives? Are we not the same, um, you know, uh, as Africans? Is Africa not still suffering with these, with these writers? Very, very important question. Um, that uh, if I can come in, sir, I'll attempt to answer that. Okay, you see, just like Usa and them, the relevance and impact of literature in society now, no, understand it today. Some of us read because we want to read and say we don't read this writer, but the message of the writer most times is left out in our readings. When I read books, I read for the message. What in this writer they talk about? Love, it they express frustration, it they express dissatisfaction, or what is it? That's what I read for. And in Sierra Leone, because of the, how you call them, inductive method of teaching, what in teachers say now if we believe, we know they left the picking and let them find out for themselves the deductive way. When you teach picking a salon books like Things Fall Apart, like uh, I think the arms have been saying, you did teach only for make you go pass an exam. A lot of people don't read plenty books in Sierra Leone, but they have not actually understood the concepts. And this is not only applicable to literature, it's across the board. Some people tell you I have a PhD in this. Listen to them talk. They only talk concepts. They don't know how to apply what they have learned. Well, having said that, having said that, I want to ask a question here. And this is good to anybody in the panel can answer this one. It says, um, it says here that um, for me, African writers have not done anything significant except to tell me what is already happening. That's not correct. Well, how would you no, answer that? Correct. Um, Annie Domingo, you want to answer that one? Please unmute. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm just unmuting. Um, yeah, that's one way to look at it, but that is not correct. You know, 
Because what, what literature does, what the African story does, is telling us who we are, not who people tell us we are. You know, we have to, it's what Nadia said, we've got to find ourselves, we've got to understand ourselves and take pride in ourselves. You know, there's so many times when they're telling us that we are less. And we have to, these stories show us the, the, the power that we have, the strength that we have, the knowledge that we have. You know, for so long, they're telling us that, oh, the English or the European language or the European storytelling, we were doing stories and some of that long before that. If they only think we were writing before they were writing in Europe, we we are not told how, the depth of our strength. These stories start to give us an inkling. When we are telling our stories, it gives us an inkling of the strength that is behind us, the knowledge that is behind us. If you think about something like the books that you, uh, the Timbuktu books that were they were that they tried to destroy, that was long before they were writing books. You, you know, we had knowledge that was put down and was supposed to be passed down to us and they were taken away. So we have to listen to our storytellers, to those griots and those people who have held on to some of those stories and passed it down to us. That was before we had books to read for everybody. But before people, most people could read, we were still telling our stories. We, 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 we forget that everything doesn't have to be written down. When we talk about books, we're talking about people who are telling stories, but they're putting it down in a way that it can be shared in a wider sense. And that's where you have people like Ngudi saying, where, what language should we write? And people say, if you write it in your uh, um, indigenous language, the story stays within a small group of people only when you translate it into English or French and that it goes wider. And that, there's a truth in it, but we've got to understand and respect our own stories and believe in our own stories. Also, you know, we have to own it and, uh, and grow from it. So saying these books written and they give me, they give us a lot, they tell us who we are, they give us our identity, they give us our root. Uh, the tree cannot grow if the root is not strong. Um, um, yes, just, um, Nadia, what can you say about that? Yeah, uh, some, uh, first I want to say, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, people can use Salon as benchmark for the rest of Africa. So you can't say, uh, 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 what you know in your immediate vicinity that I know more than exactly. the whole of Africa because at the end of the day the writers there were come Morocco or the Namibian writers the South African writers the Kenyan writers the, the Rwandan writers if you, and this is a thing because you know how many people in with, with Sierra Leone as they actually read the rest of Africa here you know, I mean, you say that uh, Africa is not the right books that were useful, but we have books written by Ghanaian professors, botanists, botanists who have written and, 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 and uh, uh, um, identified and, and written about the plants, plants in 30 African countries, what their uses are, how, how what, describing, identifying them, describing their uses, make um, um, medicinal as well as for other things who knows about that uh, you have uh, Zambians who are writing about how aid does not help Africa and what we can do now to move forward in in our own uh, with our own resources and how they can be used how many people are reading about that uh, Egyptian writers that are talking about how arts can be used to teach children uh, actual uh, uh, um, uh, North African art uh, and, and, and we, uh, sorry in regards to Islam because obviously you can't uh, you know draw uh, people's faces or whatever so how do we teach art and where does it go and how do we make sure that if we're only using uh, uh, um, we're not using people's faces okay how somebody else can come along and say that's not how your people looked or that's not what your people look like and they can change that you have Af african writers from different countries writing useful things the question is not that they're not doing it the question is is that you don't know about it because there is no infrastructure for you to get your hands on it it's not that it's not there this also reminds me of the thing when i was growing up 
when I was maybe a lot younger, people say, oh, Africans don't read. Nobody's reading. Africans don't read. They don't read. That is a myth because Africans have been writing so prolifically. I, I cannot tell you the amount of books that are out there that are in print, out of print. It's endless for every single African country. There are books everywhere dating from God knows when. So, so if Africans are writing so prolifically and have been doing since, you know, uh, the, the, what is it, 18th century, 19th century, they have been doing. It's not that this doesn't exist, it's that you don't know about it. And in order for you to know about it, because there is no infrastructure, you have to dig for that information. Do not believe that it is not there. Same as in Africans don't read. Trust me, Africans are reading. Trust me, Africans are reading. There's a Nigerian publisher that started in Nigeria. And people are reading so much, they're so successful, they opened an office in the UK. And they're so successful now, they're opening an office in, Afri in, in America. So how does that happen? Usually, you're supposed to start your office in England and then go somewhere. They started in Nigeria. They're so big now, they've got three offices in three different continents. And they're only publishing African books. So the idea that there are no books out there that are useful or Africans don't read is one of those mythologies that has been that we as Africans and Blacks have been talking, talking, talking because we want to believe this so much and it's just not true. Um, I, can, I, can I just um, also, I mean, the people are really uh, commenting and, 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 uh, and of course giving their own thought, but uh, what, what I want to say now that um, a very important for we know this, that the storyteller, um, the storyteller get three main aims. The first, now forget the audience for listen. I first aim that one day. The second, now forget the audience for remember what in the listen. And the third, now forget the audience for act upon what in the remember of what in the listen. Three, the first two, a day na the storyteller in power, forget you for listening the way we write the book. The second one, for um, forget you for remember. Again, it depends how he writes the whole book or how he writes the poetry and so on, we will make you remember. Then they all deal within the storyteller in power. But the third one, forget you for act upon waiting you remember. A day now that you earn. So when Chinua Achebe write things fall apart, when um, Aikweyama writes the beautiful ones are not yet born, when um, um, they write uh, uh, Antils of the Savannah, um, you know, the gods are not to, to blame, uh, um, um, Chike and the River, for those of you who remember all them books that day, and so on. All this to it, and they're very important, very informative for help we for understand Usai we day and how we can move forward. But how, when we, after we don't read books like, a, a, um, for example, uh, like I said, um, Beach Water Not Yet Born, we talk so terribly, uh, um, also, not terribly, but so effectively about the horrors of corruption. We don't act on them. Not to Aikuyama in duty for copying and telling me, say, Oh, I never stop corruption. I never stop. <laughs> You're quite right. <laughs> right. Now, in duty, just for tell me this story. So, I think, let me understand. You see, and uh, you see, if you fucking come in, yeah. every work of literature gets a structure, what would they call the plot. Yes. You get society introduce what you want to discuss. You yes. build up, you reach the climax, yes. you come to the end, the resolution. Usai, you the gee, uda the see, read, or listen. Yes. A lot of options for take action. Mm -hmm. What you understand from what this writer say, like Ama, where we they talk about corruption. And mm -hmm. only talk about corruption, you talk about the ethnicization process and how will they impact corruption. Have we taken action on that? Is it not getting worse? That means we not understand what you they read. For say African writers not the right, what thing will make difference is not correct. 
It is us who are reading African writers or us who are looking at African plays, etc., etc., who are not understanding what we are, we are getting in contact with because we are still living in that cocoon of colonial mentality. People will understand stories about Napoleon Bonaparte, a drunk in Europe, who took pleasure in killing his own people better than they would understand about Farmer Tamiya and Baibure. Baibure was always and is always a bad guy. And that guy never shot, fired a shot. He was bullied. But his, the image, you see the perception, the beliefs, now get for change. And part of the job of literature is to impact the beliefs in people, mm -hmm. assist them for change the perceptions, because it's these two that make the attitude in society. And when society gets an attitude, whether positive or negative, that is what society becomes. We are as we think. Like Nadia has been talking in recent Jisno, say, it can't for understand, say, it's you. What is you? how you see things mm -hmm. that makes the world yeah. up till today people spend a lot of time condemning government some of who spend time for cost government because no say then get the the capacity for do the right things but they are not because they have that mentality mm -hmm. you see literature in role now for impact your mentality and try for make you see the other side if we cannot, we are not to the writer in role, then don't blame the writer. So now I want to come to Hamza. Um, you know, you as a young writer today, um, waiting are you, waiting are you observation with uh, amongst just the young people and where they see to the way they encounter today. Waiting are your observation? Whose kind of books they will really inspire? Much of the young people that we the meet today, now that's it, not exactly, or maybe Gambia, but it could be anywhere. But what do you observe with the kind of books that we really inspire young people in today at all, or is it that non they no they read at all anymore? They only for WhatsApp no more. What's not the situation with that? Well, the situation the situation here is so tricky. It's tricky because you don't already answer the question. You say um, if they're not they read. Um, I go on um, counter Madam Nadia Madi in statement uh, because of uh, we get a situation in Sierra Leone where the youths then now they're so addicted to technology, WhatsApp, Facebook, and Telegram that they don't take them books then read or even most times self. For see themselves for me, they enter a website. It can be very difficult because of the next one take that button there or click enter and read. And most times we give them book, you see it, now you go to ask them, hey, you don't read this book, how far you don't go, what's in your analysis? And then they get back to you. So like I didn't try to say is that um I to to, to Madame Nadia uh Mary the state where they get say yet, they are no structures. And to um uh, Mr. Mansa again, um we really need for take literature to another level. We need for redefine and remodify literature. Let um, Sierra Leoneans them able for let them and appreciate them. Because as of it's not, as it, as, it, as it is now, um, it's very difficult for me to see Sierra Leonean youth. Sierra Leonean youth for me able for take a book, one whole book he read. Because I realized uh, recently. I read um, J.K. Rowling in book Inside One Week. I read Inside One Week, that's not a Harry Potter, the Philosopher's, Philosopher's Stone. And where I share this on uh, on my page, I say, hey, I don't read the Philosopher's Stone in three days. I say, hey, how you doing? What are you going to do? Like, you don't mean to hold your phone? I, I, I mean, you don't mean to do nothing. You just dance inside room more you read. I mean, how does that work? So like say, this is not the problem. The problem is that we don't get the culture of reading. We don't get the culture of reading. And even most of my friends and my close friends and because where I can write, I'm most in a making go and deliver them for myself. So that for me, then just um, get a chance, see me, interact with me, and we get up actually for read. But trust me, it is very difficult. Even when I write my second book, I even put a part there where I say, 
I want to answer these questions then. When I tell me the image the inside the book, when I tell me the description there, when I tell me which chapter na, na the most interesting chapter, and when I do when I send an image, when I contact the number, when I when I, when I get in touch with me. And guess what? For all the four hundred books that we then sell in, inside our four months, now only five people have reached out to me. Only five people. Can you imagine that? So, <laughs> I just say this is interesting. But like, just uh, what did Madam Nadi uh, Madam Nadi say? We need to create a structure, and we need to create the belief. Say, now literature, now in the camp, save the people. Then, and also, and the reason what in African culture, the reason why African culture fail, the reason why African culture fail, now because of youth them um, nowadays, then they fail for read literature. And if you don't get the time for Fido to parent it around and get a conversation about them, for know how the real tradition and culture of Africa they never fall on. And if you never for get some through that pathway, then you need to read the books of great scholars then. The people you talk and more about Senghor and you can get Chino Achebe and you get other inspirational writers then when you tell you tradition and culture. And nowadays we don't even realize it. They can not adopt the Western culture in a sense that they forget the sense that they, 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 they forget them African culture. Okay, where when you go see Peking will just answer in Mama, where you go see Peking and Mama, they may get palava. Like uh, back in the days, it's not possible. Even when they go teach you at, at school, the behavior where really they get, the what they instill in you, the literature, and, and what they really, because uh, they, they, they not only make you in classroom, um, they don't make, they only make you um, have a class. The classroom just a place of learning, but then they make the world a place of learning. Wherein you take what you, you don't learn, you carry on go to the outside world. How you treat your family, how you treat your community, and the responsibility where you get in the state. But nowadays, if you ask speaking them, youth them nowadays, what is the responsibility that I owe them? What is the responsibility in the community? And what is the responsibility as citizens, as patriots? They don't really know. Most of the time, what is the head, party, chilling. Map and then you get technologies there, and of course the new trend we don't come out with them for TikTok. So we realize say Africa tradition of reading the plan die out slowly, subconsciously. They don't know say it ever happen, but it's happening. If they don't try for the modifier, if they don't try for create structure, if they don't try for inspire more people away than they read literature, for many come into writing and reading, then definitely it's gonna be a problem and. I also throw the light back to the government in Sierra Leone. You see, we are in, and they try to promote education. Yes, that's true. But you say you want to see them call writers and say, when I see them, writers, they want to come today. No, we can help on a low address situation. No, we see what you and what you for do to promote the reading and writing culture in Sierra Leone. No, it's not possible. A musician and they go call. Now, 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 people, uh, where do they do? DJs, uh, they go call. Okay, now, footballers, they go call. So, where's the in interest in education? So, um, we all go come together and say now we all let them make literature if and dinosaur right? radio because you love the support and it's really not there now few families that you will see in a serial we wouldn't we take them picking and say on a pseudo and read this book a one i don't now come analyze for me but for now it's not really really possible you will see a three-year-old picking go cram music we just from a last week you don't have on youtube but you will not ever see a three-year-old picking every for sing every, every for read um simple books there like a chicken and the river so you don't see the problem we are, we are facing so it's only the government I don't know, there's a lot of, Hamza, there's a lot of noise in the background. I don't know if it's you or whoever. Some noises in the background. This is a young man. The activities yeah. in the background, they are very I'm not saying a young man. You're not going for stop for a minute and stop there and listen to her. All right. right. Concern with it is now, now in practically they happen now in background. Yeah. So what you realize so, okay. is the fact that there's a lot so, happening at his background, and there are some of the challenges he's going through as a young man. You, you are quite people. right, King Mufasa. Exactly. What did the man so, talk about? Let's, I just, be so. let's just allow so. him to go. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. Yeah, carry on. Because I wanted everybody to hear what he said. I think it's so important. Yeah, we can hear him. We carry can on. Hear him that okay. okay. So, 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 that, so that's the problem. Yes? Yes. Okay. So now, well, okay. Now, um, what it is? So now, very, very. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Um, just one second, please. Um, Nadia. Um, I think we know it's some very important point in terms of 
uh, in in terms of how the reading culture they decline. But I must say, Nadia, you're talking, you talk about a lot of African people the way they read at the same time. And um, but make I just mention this before I forget, Hamza. Somebody they ask, what in a book in title? Um, so please say you book in title. Somebody, I think one for no you book in title. Okay, uh, um, even though we come to book that will be published. But um, Nadia, you probably want to respond to to Hamza. Yeah, no, I just want to say, something. Hamza, you're right. It's a Syrian problem, but it's not an African problem. Yeah. Yeah. Syrian problem, not necessarily one or Africa. So trust me, the rest of Africa, a lot really of them do not have the problem. Salon gets the problem more than many others. So, so a lot of it is Syria because the literature promotes the Africa right now and the festivals. Yeah, we don't really have a literature festival as such in Syria. I know we had one about two years ago, but the festivals, Somaliland, when a Somaliland, when nobody knows, recognize that. They have two festivals. Hamza, can you mute? Hamza, can you mute for now so that we go hear this one? Yes. Nadia. Yeah, this, this, I'm not saying that other African countries don't have a problem with reading, but what I'm saying is, let's not use Salon as the benchmark for Africa, because trust me, we are somewhere at the back, around the corner, under the pavement, under the under. I don't know, but they tell you they go fair now, Yusuf, you got all lost. Salon is not the benchmark for Africa. <laughs> and, and, and in terms of literature, I think we get one or two publishing houses there. We not get the infrastructure and the well, as you have yourself have said, and this world and they teach literature. Of course, nobody will therefore be interested in the world and teach. Why would anyone want to read a book after going to school in salon through those literature classes? The only thing you want to do is shoot yourself because you, you, you didn't know literature classes. You think, what's this got to do with me? <laughs> of course, why you go and read anything when you come out of that class day? Because reading is only to pass, nothing else. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Why you beat the dog? You call me all kind name, tell me, say, I'm stupid. You can't last that class, no sabi read. Why you don't beat me like dog for 10 years? Why would I want to read? No way, no why way. No way, you okay. cannot. Um, Nadia, 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 hold on, because this one. Before you get solid enough, yeah. Be mama see, me can no come out. Be papa see, me can see no house. We be party town, we go lonely be. But you can't go broke me with. <laughs> Before Motoka go broke with that cool detention, don't believe it. <laughs> now, um, I mean, you don't talk, I don't talk about something, I don't read something very important as in terms of how reading culture day or, in fact, how education culture day necessarily. So, when we talk of literature, we talk now, in other words, from what I read from Una, that literature not the main tool for tune the mind, clean the mind. Program. Literature is the conduit for civic education. Right. So if, um, sorry, my folks, I don't know if you can see me. You cannot see me anymore. Uh, I don't know what is going on here. Um, um, I don't no, know if you can see me. Can. Right, you can. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you are now. <laughs> sorry, I'm on. Sorry. Um, now, so in other words, yeah. we're looking at literature. When you look at literature in the sense that now the very important tool we, we need for help we um for help we tune we mind for for put me in the right frame of mind supposedly in the right frame of mind for make we able for address we say with community and with country so if that narrative they no day or no right we they pan trouble so when i listen to it in hamza they talk about Nasser Leone, that if people they not they read that much Nasser Leone, um, you know, no wonder they will say we at the moment. And if people they read, they do not they comprehend 
and I go and I go admit that. But who book then the way I read in a cellule, we are not we really are not be understand the impact. But me and I possibly been lack literature. So when I've been the read, I really been a push for understand. But also the kind of people that I interact with. I think now an important point and again for literature. Maybe get a teacher what they call Mr. Dugan Singh, in St. Edwards. Amazing. He was my friend. May his soul rest in peace. May his soul rest in peace. Mr. Dugan Singh has been an influential teacher in my life. We make her enjoy literature. But also I've been getting people like a late Dele Charlie. We help me when we do Macbeth. When we do um, One Pound Flesh, we na uh, we na uh, uh, um, uh, Merchant of Venice. For the first time, I begin for I begin for understand Shakespeare because uh, because he adapt all them plays in the Pancreo. So I begin for understand. So I be, now come the next question. Now, where would you look African literature? The literature where we get the writer mostly by English, written by English. And we all know for say English language na foreign language. Now already I wonder whether English language na actually an obstacle for make we understand the literature and apply what's in the right part of the literature. And when I say obstacle, not only obstacle for the school picking there, is it also an obstacle really for the teachers? Yeah. You understand? So just that language, first of all, I wonder we address that one day for African literature. Because of course this Plenty fantastic African literature literature day um, out there. But I just wonder, and as I said, I ask the question not only to my panelists, but even to Una with the listen that they are bully right now. English language, now obstacle for make we understand with literature for the impact we mind, for make we act properly, or is it that, or, or is it not? I mean, what's in my, I need uh, to you answer something. Yes, yeah, so because I think that it goes back to what I was talking about earlier on. If we say we want to talk now the African language, which one? Yeah, and we able to write them? Um? Because nobody not be teaching me how to read and write clear. Or uh, now nobody in the land of school how to read and write we own language there. So if you write them um, now uh, Monday and somebody not able to read the Monday, uh, so what, what, how, what are we learning? You know, what we need to do is to find uh, um, a language that we can all communicate in, or the majority can communicate in. Because if you go uh, in Nigeria and they get several languages, you go to Salon and they get several languages, and so on and so on. Sooner or later, you get to translate into a language where a lot of more people are able to read or understand or hear in. What we're going to do is to be bilingual at least, so that we can do both. And then we can translate, or if we write in your own language, we're able to translate them um, so that more people can. Because otherwise, we just keep them in little pockets and it, we're not learning about each other. You know, we, we need to do both. We need for that we're able to talk in our own language where it gets the sweetness and, the, and, 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 and some of the uh, um, subtleties. But we can find that also if we do them in English or French or whatever, because. Otherwise, we cannot communicate with, communicate with the rest of the world. If we only learn about literature in our own language, then we go say we go study in America or France or whatever. We are at a disadvantage straight away. So we need both. We need to learn from um, what is our indigenous languages, our, our culture, and then we also have to be able to export it out there. So that people there and also understand we and we self understand we self. We before remember also say not only all the um, Africans and they in Africa. There are lots of our children who need to know their identity who cannot speak those languages. Which we will cut them off. We say okay, if you're not savvy for talk this language, you know you, you are no longer part of us. We've got to be able to, to communicate. So we're going to do both. And we go for make, bring them, make them begin learn the other language. If then they learn French and German and Latin, they can be able to learn their own language. But we don't do it. Okay. Now, then they, I mean, I want for I want for ask something on that. I I can see for see yes, if we learn both, yes, it cannot make sense. But I also want to bring um, another aspect of literature uh, um, into consideration here. Then I want to go ancient times. Let's bring in the jelly bar, the jelly, the storytelling kind of literature. We, I mean, how much role you think the oral literature go play 
in helping for build again if the purpose i'm assuming this for now um and i'm and I, 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 I put this assumption out there that the purpose for literature now for guide we mind reshape we mind for make we act right for build the country um hamza talked about a lot of philosophers we write so many things um before we shape or many other countries in our europe um so the writings of a lot of people um, um shape uh, the, the revolution, for example, in South Africa, if we take uh, 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 um, Stephen Biko, where in, you know, in, uh, in book where they, where they publish, um, I write what I like. So you read the stuff the way Stephen Biko talk about literature is so powerful for help shape the, 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 the course of the revolution, na, uh, na, na, or, or should I say the resistance in South Africa. Okay, so if that's not the case, if it be to say the literature now for, now for make a shape we mind, for make we act right. How, how much role then you think the oral um, literature will get for play uh, for help in this? Or is it that the oral literature these days not mean anything anymore? Now, TikTok, now the new oral literature. Now, you know, I mean, what's not the new oral literature now? Uh, I don't know whether I would have for answer. Ask, 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 ask. I think I can come in. I think say, uh, okay. Okay, Hamza, 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 sorry. Uh, yeah. Hamza. <laughs> I think say um just yeah just like when you talk um, um the oral literature get a very um, a big role for play um it, it don't help for shape so many countries and especially that of Mali uh, I can tell you the story of Sundiata Keta from here to tell everything because of the jali the grand say what they they were on pass up to the great um, and grand kingdom and also me and papa as well in back na being and then it passed this same story to me when I am um, Sundiata Keta story to me so like I try to say is that the oral um, literature gave more strength than that of the written literature to me on uh, analysis because I realize say every night and every day sit down and talk about history and get a culture where the most don't get and past um, um generation to me your analogy is that it gets some demerits them where they hinder um some small small um stories them so now we don't take that day so what if it is in a some of the things them way it get with the hinder them one of the uh, things that really hinder them because stories where they pass from one generation to another some people they can like for modify them and then give them some little bit of uh, a, a tune or the left of modifier they give them some little bit of easiness for example traditions then they pass from time to time and as they go civilization they come you realize it then it eradicate some part of the stories then like for example what happened and um for example again um Celia Taketa, you get so many many Okay. Um, again, we're having some uh, network issues again with our man. Many, um, many narration them. You will not in this, not this that way. Okay. You're not really easy because of that. So the omit, omitting information you know, one of the problems there. Well, well, actually, I mean, I can easily tell you that in written, in the written literature, there is a lot of omission. Believe me, <laughs> as well. It's not just in the oral. There's a lot of omission. Okay, so uh, so it yes, doesn't... sir. If I can come in, sir. Yes, please. Yes, please. You see, we have a problem of understanding the role of literature and in the application of literature for change and impact society because we already get concepts built around what and what we for do how we for do them but if we go to the issue of what language do we use i not think say that for be a problem in modern day because technology don't reach the level where anybody can learn anything in any language if you use the tools who are available, you can listen to any language. In fact, now they even get interpreters apps where you can get on your mobile phone 
Okay? But the key issue here is the formative stage of the human being, the childhood stage. We need to go back and get parents them for understand, say, then get a role for perform at that stage. We need to go back and get communities for understand, say, then get a role for perform. Because oral stories told at home, I remember was small, I mean, they tell which stories about a spider, a sector, a sector. Then stories, then they then built concepts in we of ethics and morality. Today, we pick in the all day pan, WhatsApp, TikTok. These things don't teach you because there are tools to use. And you get the danger of being exposed to rogue knowledge. That's exactly what social media is doing for most people nowadays. Some of us may not be exposed to rogue knowledge because as far as I'm concerned, nobody can impact me at my age that I am. You can count with all you trash on social media and not mean nothing to me. But for that picking where they grew up, exposing the child to that kind situation they now they either take begin building character. So if we are really serious about using literature to impact society, the issue should not be in the language because Africa as a continent, according to one prolific writer, well, I don't read most of his books, then, uh, Martin Meredith. Now, a journalist will write a lot about Africa. He say Africa gets 10,000 cultures. These 10,000 cultures we are divided at the Berlin Conference into what we have today, the 52 or 54 or whatever number of states that we have. And within the states, you will get different people from different backgrounds being brought together. Some are friendly, some are unfriendly. So if we use the European languages then today for communicate, we can take on to the next step. And I believe, say, UNICEF don't provide that step. Way back in 1958, then come and say, teach picking them from age zero to the 12, uh, 12 year age, that is end of primary school, Use the mother tongue for teach the picking at school. Because when you teach somebody in a mama language, if they understand whatever concept you try for tell them better. So later, if you go and learn another language, it they able to apply that concept the better. This is where we are failing in education in, Af in Sierra Leone, no, not say Africa, sorry because other parts of Africa don't begin to take steps. East Africa, they use Swahili. I think, I think even Senegal, they use uh, Wolof, where they the major language. Sierra Leone, we get major languages so we can use for teach. And we can teach literature in those languages. Now I can teach things fall apart in any language we are able to talk. You okay, see, I, the role of the teacher. Yes. The understanding of the teacher, now is the first thing. Then the, the outlook of society. What is society want? Are we still going to be talking about education in terms of the Eurocentric view? Or do we want to make it Africa? And I you think it's best for us to I make want, it Africa. I want, I want to hold you on that question. Then, and I want to take that question. I want to pass on to somebody we, um, we did in the background where I want to make himself answer this question. But I will ask this question as well to you, Nadia. Whether we for you know literature we for want on African or we keep up with the Eurocentric view. First, I want to ask Femi Pama your view um, on that particular topic. There, no keep literature inside the Eurocentric view or leave it turn on African. If we go for turn on African, then you know how do we do it? Somebody mentioned about the Chinese, for example, on the chat, uh, for example. There, I mean, now when you go to China, I know if to say you will easily meet a book when they just write by English name. They're most than writing by China. But maybe maybe China not for compared to Sierra Leone or to the rest of Africa. I don't know. Um, but we, we explore this. 
And the purpose of this for me, now that waiting will work for we as African people. And I think importantly we engage in this kind of discussion yeah. so that we find some solution. Because so far, what we don't the use in the past, not seem for the work for we. Okay. Today, we didn't have the same situation with the grumble, the same grumble as somebody already don't point out for saying English literature, not seem for doing it, seem for, not English literature. The literature they will do right before, not seem for do anything. In fact, uh, if anything, to tell don't was off now. I don't know. But whatever the case is, waiting get for work for we back. Fair me. What are you going to say? Let me keep the literature now upon the English Eurocentric way so that lay English that can colonize me back bar. Let me keep on the, especially Sierra Leone, when I win at the country, when I let them build the first university, Athens of British West Africa. You know, let me keep on the bar, or let me take an African. What now you answer? Hi, Yusufu. Um, yeah, I don't know how for big answer your question, but I will make a couple of statements and that will try for answer. And hopefully some of the statements that they make will be able to help for show Usai Media Link from. Um, as a media person, as somebody with into technology, I agree with what they see about um, you know, social media and about the role we that need to play and you know they play a good role. Um, I think my definition of, of the media in all the different guises that we get, um, it's an amplifier. The media helps to amplify whatever you put out there. Um, if we want to make we begin to um, learn for read or get interest in reading, we have to be doing programs on reading, like which we did do so today. So for me today, um, the this conversation will amplify some of the problem that we already exist. And sometimes we go catch somebody's attention, we go possibly go research some of the writers they won't I don't call and go go read. Um, I think a teacher is somebody that doesn't do that profession for money. Because you get for um as a teacher if you did teach literature, I mean they listen to Nadia with Nadia they say about when they beat you for cancer don't call land. If somebody they beat you and then they, you're never going to get the interest. But if you get a teacher and why they talk about a teacher, I know you mean somebody who go take the profession on because th to make ends meet. I'm talking about somebody who born and why educate people, why um pass on experiences and you know, you walk into a classroom, the teacher, yes, speaking and kicking out the teenagers around you. But if there's a certain teacher where, I'm not going to see the leg, but where they touch some side inside them, they will sit down and listen. I went to grammar school, um, I mean, get a teacher who teach with drama. Um, Yusuf, we call him name Aleron. You know, I remember this guy, um, he bring all the English book that will be in the land. And as you see, he turned them into to, to the language them with some of the other people in our school able to understand. I came from Europe, I came from Italy. So for me, I understood when they talked, um, when, when they spoke about Shakespeare and, and the things that we did do. You know, um, Chiamanda Adichie talks about um, snow. When she was growing up, she was reading books about snow. She didn't have a clue what snow was. She didn't have a clue what a blue-eyed boy was. You understand? But when it begins right, I didn't say they begin right because that's what she was exposed to. So you see, um, some of these things I want to talk about, the teacher has a key role to play for make sure say, the picking they're able to understand and lack the subjects. I was a mathematician going to school. And one of the reasons, the main reason, because I like my math teacher. You know, I'm not sure saying I've been the best math teacher ever, but for me, he was. He inspired me. And because of Dandy, I did maths. And I'm, I try not to fulfill maths because I wanted to please him. So I think some of Dandy we, we, we get for look at. But you know, um, this discussion, it's, it's wide. I'm, I'm here in Hamza, the young man. I feel um, his pain. Um, you know, at Yeruna, all the talk say, we get for change things them in Sierra Leone. Even the literature will be read in the 80s and 70s wasn't any good. Again, I beg to differ because I know a, a few people that were in this side of the world in the UK we got educated secondary school in Sierra Leone, 
some of them can na this country they make them go for go teach for go take english as a foreign language they never go take that exam day and some of these people are leading in their schools then they teach na secondary schools them head of english and head of literature and not at least three Sierra Leoneans them um and all they na woman for some strange reason but you know we 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 they teach na na schools them na 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 the uk so i think say at some point our schools were doing a good job i'm not saying that we we learn um shakespeare and and the rest um it's good and you should carry on um but when the thing that we learn able help we for open we eye to other things you know i i read mark max you know i read um roots these two books were written by a guy called um Hey gosh, I don't forget. Alex Haley. Alex Haley, and he wrote about his history. Then he 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 make myself able for go research about his history and learn a bit of my history from the from the slave trade. You know, um, I I I read, um, you know, we talk about um um Chiamanda. I've got like three or four of her books, you know, and I I just I I love the way she's talking about her blackness. I get one book where it says "World for be feminist." I was reading it on the train one day. All man, they watch me like say, you know, what's what's wrong with this guy? But you know, she talks about, you know, even men should be feminists because we have daughters, we have sisters, we have wives. We need to learn how to treat these people. So um, the point I decided to make is when we read certain things, it broaden we imagination, it broaden we interest. We can go go research some of them in India. We might not be familiar to us. But sometimes, you know, down the line, it will help us to grow our knowledge and to do other things. I go left for for now. Oh, but before I go, sometimes you will come back to me. So I have a bunch of books written by African people. <laughs> Wait, please, I'm not saying you should be me. So this is what I'm us. talking about. I no, please tell us from the books. This tell is us what I'm talking books. about. You know, we should all be tell feminists. You know, read it if you can, guys. It's an interesting book. <laughs> Mamanda, please no tell me the title of the book. Tell me the title of the book. It's called We Can you say? Yes. We should all be feminists. I do agree from a metaphysical point of view. Creation is a feminist. <laughs> okay. Now can I um uh, um because I want to come, you know, looking at wrapping up, we we really covered such a wide range um on this particular topic there. So but I still get this question. And the question for me, looking at the trajectory I want to make Africa go, what kind of writers the way we need today? What kind of writers do we need today? Looking at the trajectory we want to make Africa go, we want to make Africa become, um, you know, technologically, uh, um, you know, brilliant. We want to make Africa become independent, truly independent, and so on. What kind of writers the way we will for look for today? We will celebrate. Nadia. We're already on the trajectory. If I want to read an African writer that is writing magic realism, I can find one. If I want to look at politics, I can find one. I want feminism, I can find one. I want to find an African woman writing about geography, I can find one. I want to find an African uh, person writing about the solar system, I can find one. We didn't necessarily have that before as much as we have it now. If we cannot be in, if we're in literature, right? Literature cannot be one dimensional uh, uh, for Africa. It has to be, you know, there has to be, it has to be multi-dimensional in everything, right? So that the literature, so we are not confined to one space as writers. And now, African writers are writing romance books, their mills and boons. This is not just, literature is not about intellectualizing absolutely everything because we're Africans and we have to prove that, you know, oh, we can write about this. But nah, we need our mills and boons romance books. We need our science fiction books. We need our uh, books about rock and soils. We need our books about history. We need our books about empires. We need all of it. When you see that you can go and pick up a book now by any African from anywhere about anything, then you know we're on the path 
to where we need to go. Rather than it being in one space, it needs to be in all spaces. Because if I want to pick up a book in Europe by a European about anything on the planet, how to make a sofa, I'll, I can get it. And that's what it's about. So for African writers, we are literally on that path now. Maybe you can get a book. If you Google hard enough, if you look hard enough, you might be able to find that book that an African has written about a sofa, about how to uh, uh, create a sofa, how to build one. Simple little things like that we need now, yeah? Because our writing has, has went through certain constrictions because of our social experience. So, uh, so, 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 Nadia, so Nadia, practically speaking, practically, let us say right now, we need writers there, we will write about how to make Casada leaf. We need writers yes. them. We go write about, like for example, somebody sent me a message yesterday. Um, a young person, a serial, asked me yesterday for a uh, make a show um, how did the um, pull nado, how did they do pull nado na serial? Right. You see, eh? how did they, so all of a sudden I'm like waiting, but na serial you day ask somebody na serial you day they they will for tell you. But it's possible, no, no. So I begin for wonder now for saying, yeah, it looks like we need a book where we get 10 kinds of day, and these books should be in school. Um, and I can tell you as well. Right and and I can tell you right now, so there's a Ghanaian, a Ghanaian writer right now from the Ga, uh, 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 what do you call it, the Ga uh, uh, tribe, who has written a book about Pulnado, according to the Ga tribe. So right. probably, if you go further down to Ivory Coast, you might find somebody's done the same. We just don't have one for Sierra Leone, but this is the simple things. We need to have these things, Yusuf. Well, Femi, Femi just showed, Femi just showed a, a book of, Femi, whose book were you showed, Gigi Snow? He said it's a book called Right to Health, Women, Children, and Culture. Now, oh, oh my goodness me. Another fantastic, so basically that book day, get a lot we talk about for for um you know woman the bone picking tape and all that so the books then they are things just like nadia say we need for be people away the research but also i want to also draw on waiting um both um annie and um and, and, and mr jalo jamboria say earlier on colonization make we not underestimate the depth at which colonization they affect we um, we attitude and we appetite for read African literature or for listen to African literature. Make we not underestimate that because when we mention Shakespeare, everybody they stand up straight. But we get Wale Shoyinka, we get so many other writers in Africa. We just as good, equally just as good. When we mention Othello in Shakespeare, many, plenty of we know they think of Othello in, Afri in African background or in black background, if I, may, if I put that away. Most people know they think about that. Othello was a Fulani. <laughs> no joke. He was, he, was an, he was a ruler from the Almoravid Empire. The Almoravid were Fulanis. Right, but now, okay, let me, since we don't talk that way, then, let me bring now with him, let Dele Charlie do for one pound fledge, which is Merchant of Venice. Dele Charlie adapts Merchant of Venice into one pound flesh, and Shylock become Sajo with a fuller man. So, Yusufu, let us just answer that question for the class. The yes. class, no, you know, have been a talk. This language, this no language, this that. Yes. If you do have per English, this thing when they call theater, this thing when they call storyteller, all for included inside English literature. Yeah, so yeah, you're quite right. If you they teach the book pan the English, if you get the beginning where the act and pan the career, you get the man with kind side to can talk about Mende, that is how maybe African literature should be taught. For let we try for in make this inclusion so that. This concept, CF go understand. You know, before we get to where are we going to do it in Mende, Timni, and all of this, theater and storytelling, Yusufu. 
all for joining inside this literature. So if you don't understand in one way, you will understand it in another way. This is, this is, Yusuf, this is exactly what I said, but I put them in another way, say. We can use the tools of information technology, then we use mother tongue, mommy language. Nain Nadia, don't expand so. That's exactly what I meant. But, but that is exactly what I was talking about when I said you do both. We don't just leave it in one yeah. way. It's got to be yeah. encompassing in all sorts of ways. And it's not just with, and that's why I say, it doesn't have to always be written down. You know, it can be through dance. It can be yeah. music. It can be through... It can be street it can be through, theater. Yeah, you know, street theater. Before we had all this book, book, book business, people in Sydney, they tell story. We simply they know what we heritage. We simply they know about the world and what made us who we are. And when we're talking about like the book that uh, Femi shared just now, we can't depend on other people for telling the story because the Pulangu, for example, now Mali but different from the Pulangu now. So we can't just go and say, oh, well, we get that book late. We can do we own. We are able to tell the own version. That's what I'm saying. It's what's, uh, what's the case? Because otherwise, now so we they lost myself and just go for other people and story. And yeah. we, they, we follow that road where they go and they further and further away from our own stories. We've got to own it. And let's yeah. look at the similarities, but also realize that because we are different peoples, we have little subtleties. That, you know, now like uh, when you talk about uh, the Jollof Rice War, the Jollof Rice War and the Nikola Gambe, it's different from the front. Jollof Rice War and the Nikola Gambe. Well, now they come out to. Now they come out to. Now they originate from Senegambia. I, 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 I don't deny that. Yeah, they say. <laughs> Over here, so when they talk about Jollof Rice War, they say we all get to see we all got reversion. It come up, yeah. it come up Gambia, but Nigeria they make their own version. Salon got their own version. Yeah. So, on. so we get for Lance, it has the same source. But the man say get their own version and they call her Rigra. Okay, yeah. one second. Now, make us say this. Ali, can you mute Ali? Mute, mute, please, Ali. Thank you. Now, so then, if we if we put this into um, African literature and we look at the writers. It, seem, it appears now to me that the appreciation of the different kind of writers, the writing um, um, topics the way we get within Africa, actually, now one way we all just get for embrace because it's not the best route for me we take. So I'm not just study just uh, um, um, Gambian literature or Senegalese or, or just Sierra Leone, but the fact that we're able to pull from all these many different sources that in fact make we as African people, put we as African people in such a much stronger position in terms of we, uh, we comprehension, understanding, appreciation of literature and many, many different cultures. I will say, me as a storyteller, when I go out for perform, uh, and today, for example, the school where I will teach today, while I go on, I'm able to talk to them from stories all the way back from Abyssinia, Axum, um, uh, you know, the pyramids, now, Meroe, right across through to Nigeria, Ghana, until I come to Sierra Leone, talking about, you know, uh, uh, Okomfu and Noche in a Ghana way, bring down the golden stool, all these stories. But that's because me, me on Yusuf Ujalo, me, me mind, um, and the read we don't read about literature is so wide. So, talking to Hamza, asking Hamza and listening to Hamza talking about the young people, for example, in Sierra Leone today, we're not just TikTok. What's interesting, if TikTok and uh, WhatsApp is the new literature, <laughs> and I, I'm saying this very, very, um, I don't know, I, I'm saying this in a very conservative way, maybe, but it appears as if the TikTok and the WhatsApp now kind of the new added literature now because young people go there and they access a lot of information a lot of information then they access them one way or the other i begin for wonder how all of that get for play into this or how do we celebrate we writers them through all of this i know for say nadia you get a um, you get a uh, please nadia tell me about what how you they use the social media for again put the literature across since we talk about TikTok and all this stuff as 
forms of some kind of forms of literature, I think. But Nadia, please tell me about what you chef they do. Okay, so very briefly, I run something called Indie Bookshow Africa. Indie Bookshow Africa is a platform for African literature. Yeah, read, write, publish. Okay, um, I, we celebrate African literature, and this is the thing because what I realize is, is that we know actually know the depth and breadth of African literature. So on YouTube, people are reviewing African literature, yeah? And I want to create a, 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 an equivalent of Amazon reviews, but just for African literature. So if you see that plant in your backyard, you don't know where it be, you don't want to say anybody be writing anything about plants, African plants, where you go uh, um, in the bookshop Africa, maybe you go find somebody review that book there where you nobody ever thinks they exist. Yeah, so it's all literature, not just um, 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 uh, fiction, non-fiction, cookbooks, everything. And it's about getting people to review it because reviewing makes it valid. Reviewing brings the people in. You don't have to be African to review it. You just need to love books. So that is a platform for that so that we can begin to see the, the length and breadth and know, you know, that, at the moment on, on Instagram, right? I'm doing a, 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 like a, a, a one week, I'm doing African writers that committed suicide, right? On Monday, talk about my mental health, mental health, this, we'll talk about Africa, whatever the mental health. You know, we don't, who do you know? How, how many Africans do you know, African writers that committed suicide? Do you know their stories? Because I'm finding out about their stories. I'm finding about the, how many Egyptian writers committed suicide how many of them were women moroccan writers that committed suicide zimbabwean writers south african writers that committed suicide i'm reading about them how why how did this end up here yeah so many intricate things so many intricate things so in the book show you know it's on instagram it's on 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 the on the youtube for you to just discover there are people probably following me they're not really interested in literature but they're going to read that story about that woman that walked into the sea in South Africa and drowned herself because her father was in charge of the apartheid movement. He believed that there should be apartheid. And he told his daughter, you're an absolute disgrace to me. And she walked into the water and she drowned herself. She killed herself for that. How, how many people know this? They don't know. So, you know, there's so much. There's so much. And for me, it's like I have to give it to you. And then also just for say so so that's where i'm coming from in terms of literature bringing bringing as you say this platform this business of platform this business of social media now getting pulling pulling people to these things to create platforms and draw the people in because they don't know it's out there they've got the TikTok, they've got the this they got the this but you build the platform and you draw people in you draw people yeah. in Nadia, somebody said earlier on about publicizing and making, um, you know, maybe we need to do more publicity on a lot of the work that we're doing. I know, uh, um, you know, of course, your platform, Indie Book Show, is one very effective platform where people can go to and you can get access to see many books that are out there to read. And so we need people to be able to really search for the books. Um, we, you know, I know Annie Domingo, you just published your own book. Please, can you tell us a little bit about your, your work? Yeah. Yes. Um, I was fascinated by the stories that we hear from way back. Um, we talk a lot about the slave trade and the slavery and that. And it's always we are in the um, position of being squashed. And I wanted to look at what happened to the people who rose above that and gave us some of our, their own views. So the story is about this um, Sarah Fox Bonetta, who was um, captured and, and given, sent to um, Queen Victoria as a gift. And this was sent to her because they wanted to embarrass the English and they used the child like it was an object to be passed around. But when she got to England, it was how she was viewed. She was exoticized, but yet she had no choice. And she had, 
we know that you had family we know that there was a, that uh, a village a father and everybody were killed we know that you had siblings and for me i wanted to look at where she came from before all of this happened so it's a fi it's fictionalized so in the fiction i show her older sister who could tell us their story about being african in their villages and the contrast of what happens to them and the other thing i wanted to look at the dichotomy the hypocrisy that was going on in victorian england where they were saying that there's no slave trade there was no slavery in in england so the older sister goes to america as a slave and the younger one comes to england as a princess and look at these two, these two girls who grew up from the same place and how their fate has dealt them and the older sister comes to victorian england and see how these two people looking with a different gaze and it's to look at what was happening to black people in England at that time once they were saying there was no slavery because this was at the time when soon after they were sending black people back to um, Africa and the girl she sent back to Sierra Leone after one year this child and look at all the things that have happened to her in her eight or nine years and that was that, that. but this, there's a sequel to it when she's when she sent back to England, which I'm in the middle of writing. But I wanted to really concentrate on this child's mind and what was happening to her as she was being passed around like a parcel. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I'm at, I think that's a very important. And, and the, the, na the name of the novel is Breaking the Mafia Chain, and yes. Mafia is the Swahili word for African Holocaust. Okay, the mafia breaking the mafia chain. Now, for those of whom are waiting, a thousand years of that, can we break it? Yeah, yeah. For so that's what they were trying to do. <laughs> we try, we're still trying. For people who want to check the book out, um, it, the book definitely a day out at the moment. I'm breaking the mafia chain, written by um, Annie Domingo, and I think the story where Annie Domingo they talk about a very important story because even then this there, so I did do some uh, or supposed to have started already doing some work with the Royal Greenwich Maritime Museum and the, and at the Atlantic Gallery. Then they begin for think for reconsider how for retell this story. So one of the stories that we may introduce to them now was say look. We get other stories we need to tell about the African people and we come England, we know they're not coming England because of slavery. They come because they were well to do merchants then. Many of them came to study and exactly. in their own right. We need to see the other story then. So when we talk of literature, all these they inform we mind and they help we maybe rethink really who that we be. Um Hamza, make a come to you, uh so give your give your viewpoint as to you know what he writes at the moment and what stage where he said they we are wrapping up the whole program now so please hamza well currently i did on my third book uh, 100 things about sierra leone uh, and the first book of course now alternative development and the path to success in sierra leone and the second one a letter to my ancestors in all these books them i did try for um talk to the government try for reach out to youth them for make them become um assets in society and also try to reach out to the government them for make them feel in the homes they wouldn't possess in order to do them and the part of the success in Sierra Leone I would say it is the book that is designed specifically to not only point out the importance of alternative development itself but also to point out holes that needs to be refilled in order to ensure the better life for all Sierra Leone and the Russian and the believe and the book to talk about politics and talk about educational system there and you talk about the role of youth decentralization the economy even entertainment i remember when we get the discussion all the time we say we need to talk about um, the cultural issues then in Sierra Leone and even john Eka, the man we um, he set up the national dance troupe but he's still not been celebrated so inside the book we talk about so many things like tourism poor human relation gender empowerment and corruption one of the first chapter so these are all issues are facing the uh, uh, in the country that are disturbing the country and then they have been discussed and then solutions are also provided in the book so that number the first book and the second book now encounter the first one say we need for call out things them by their names and then we need for try as best as possible for put government on in toes and also also take the blame for low the sidon or not do nothing because collectively we can create a better australian so my books them all about um, policy reformation now about youth inclusion and are also about promoting Sierra Leone where they can do now now that much available to say 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, all throughout this, of course, we're not bringing one other person, but I will come up to him very soon. Um, <laughs> Mr. Boy. Uh, they cow the king that? first. Cow the king first before they can throw me. <laughs> <laughs> Men are the king in foot of state. <laughs> so are they talk for her. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, so we're hearing from, um, you know, three of we um, main people, on all three of them are all authors. So let me hear it from um, the King Mufasa. What are your view with all we don't discuss? Um, I don't listen a lot, and I feel say I don't get so much knowledge in terms of what literature is all about. Um, one thing we I vividly remember when I was doing literature back in Kono, there was a literature teacher we I mean like so much because of the way how he be the time for interpret literature when uh, Bamusa Sole. He was a very good literature teacher. And what he do now for make sure say he dramatize most of the books that we be the teach in our school. One of which one remember so much now been the lion and the jewel. I know you be like I said earlier, one minute to we like for you too much, but I'll force myself for beginning read a lot more after I don't come across certain African books the way I don't read in the past. But the lion and the jewel was dramatized with the exact format of what in the book talk about. So even if you don't get too much knowledge in reading the book, you'll be able to understand the storyline just because of the way how he tried for dramatize them and make them very simple for the one who will not be able to forget access for read the book because the book was not too available for sell self na free to. When I salon self I go see because then say na kono be me been there for the very first time while me there from four. So what are you always want to talk about? So definitely, Amza, your book is going to be very difficult for make the school line of education because what you they talk about, no government, no one for your day. What's in the your book, no government, no one for adhere to one. So for make that one you go inside the school curriculum, not to you one get for feta fit do, but all get for help you for feta fit day. Because these are some of the things that the younger generation need to know about. For me, then change the mindset, for me, then believe, say, yes, reading is also something that can empower your mind, not just the TikTok. Like somebody said earlier on, all the other social media platforms then can be used because they are a means of actually amplifying what we do as human beings in terms of we trade, we profession, and sometimes the businesses they would try for put together as well. Um, 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 me only the Nadia self they do similarly the same thing because if you use the social media platforms then for amplify literature in so many different ways. So we therefore begin look at how we they take advantage of technology so that we'll be able to make people then get used to reading. We biggest biggest problem as alone the entire community we know they read. If you want to believe, put one statement online right now and then you ask what in that statement they mean because sometimes we just glance now only one or two words will they pick out of it and they will make we own story amza example a typical example he sells 400 books but at the same time he only get five respond and i bet you those five responses are somebody now people always on ten not even get for understand self say okay this nine amza really did try for do but guess what then just one for satisfy something amza in request say i want they gonna get back to me with feedback and response some of them will do for get attention some of them will do because they read the book actually then go to them specific lines then they as a person i think i find reading really very very interesting to so much extent that I believe, say, when I continue for read, it gives me more knowledge. And also when I write, I mean, if it is another potential for write, but guess what? I realized that I can write so well, but I still not get the courage for start writing because I believe, say, writing, they take a lot of me time. So I get for beginners, you don't think, when I am in a very stressful position, that's when I will actually start to write and it widens my brain. So we get for look at the ways at which we get for able for attack certain things in a way that we less privileged things than we are feel to see we able for doing life. Reading, now the biggest problem we're gonna solve. Until we make reading become very much sociable, then until we're able to understand the concept. Sometimes we just read, but we don't even understand. 
we need to understand how to the read, we need to able for break and down, we need to able for comprehend them and say, well, this now I eat, this now I for long. So I go back to Mr. Boyjalo. If we right. be the understand what thing we they read, we for able for change we story them. But we don't understand. And the majority of the people every day now the front line of education don't have interest in education. I go back to Hamza. If we government they were gonna salon 20 years down the line, are talking about the industries that we then feel to say need for thrive for young people, then we they go back to Boy Jalo, then say Baro Bari, you say David Sinikul. So we are still in that same era. Like we've been there down the air about 30, 40 years ago. Much hasn't changed because everybody is thinking about what can it benefit me, my pocket, instead of my knowledge. So if we look at knowledge-based profits, we are far behind. We don't talk about 30 or 20 or more African writers then. How much of our own that we celebrate in civil union? We'd only make mention of few. But how much of them we do? We get Sierra Leonean writers then within the diaspora, within America, within London, plenty of them. Either they need the market to be, or we know they chase them, or we need to defend them. But why are we chasing the others? Why are the others so much attached to what we do? Is it because of their story that is related to us, or we lifestyle, or what do they think about? Now, as we say, this Speech or okay, like I said, the talking poetry or the talking literature is more than the writing literature as we see now. Some of we they talk and talk and talk and talk, we write less because we believe say civilians don't read. So why you go write pamphlets of stuff on your Facebook page where you realize say now only a few percentage of the community go for you than they but when you put a video or you put uh, an audio, they will sit down, listen to the audio. Why is in the get on for the other thing? Amza say he read um, 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 Harry Potter in one week. At your age, now miracle. Because I bet you, if you put one thousand pounds, say anybody will read Harry Potter inside one week, now salon, you will have the entire series to read that book <laughs> because of the prize money. But for privilege and for knowledge and for make you actually interpret what you don't read, <laughs> not even a handful will do that. Yeah. Because we don't have the knowledge of learning. We don't we expect learning. knowledge. So that, that, that is the whole point. You know, when I was growing up, we got to remember we had very little television. There was no internet. There was the radio and that. And therefore, we filled our time with learning, with literature. Now, the habit of just reading fast, the, the spellings of TikTok, uh, of Instagram, they don't even, they don't want to even make a full sentence. Everything no. is cut short and short. So you give them a book that has a full sentence. That's work because they're going snap, 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 snap. It has to be quick. It has to be quick. They're not taking the luxury to enjoy words. When they see that word and put it in their mouth and enjoy the taste of the word, of the literature, of the knowledge, they don't have time. It's going to be fast, fast, fast. When I was younger, we go to the theater you see a play that would last you two and a half, three hours. You'd have two intervals. Now, they want a play that's finished in an hour because they, it's the speed, speed, speed. They don't want to bring their brain. They do not want to think. And that, when they have to do that, that is work. Move on, move on. And they're not forced because the people now who are teaching them are also of that ilk. They do not want that long, long thing. They do not want to sit there and they have to read all those long essays from their students. They want quick, quick. They talk to them, they pass it on. And if they, if, if, if they don't, can't spell the word or they don't know it, they, they just put it to one side, move on, move on. And that is why we don't appreciate just knowledge. When I was growing up, you were taught, not for exams, but how to learn so that you yeah. can go on yeah. learning and you teach yourself. But here it's learn the half this page. We're only going to have this, this exam over this one chapter. You, you know, I was teaching about uh, a Macbeth and I said something about Macduff. And this was uh, children that were about to take their GCSE and they didn't know, know who Macduff was. And they were telling me that they'd done Macbeth. I go, how can you have done the whole play and not know who, who Macduff is? You know? 
But they were, they wrote it only in certain, in certain chapters because that was what the, the exam papers were going, they told them that the courses were going to be on this side and that. So that's all they wanted to learn. And they can go out and tell me that they know Macbeth or whatever it is. And that's part of our problem. And also, I think back in the days, we used to have pen pals. But now, pen pals doesn't exist anymore because that was one thing that was encouraging young people to write to each other. So if you have, have Facebook. Pals, well, definitely pen pal doesn't exist anymore because we have WhatsApp, we have Facebook, and we have other um, social media platforms. But the most worrying thing, on all these social media platforms, people tend to write short words. And the missing letter from those short words are most times one. If you want to write, look, L-O-O-K, they will just put L-O-K, but it makes them become too lazy because when they get yeah. used to that knowledge of shutting the words because they think they are on social media, so it's okay, that is the same thing they interpret in their actual educational forums. So, okay, then, then where we are, I mean, where we are at, because like I said, I'm really going to be wrapping up the program now, but what we are talking, I mean, this could be maybe another topic for, um, for another day, looking at um, how the current social media platform is hampering how the amper or this just the this prevent maybe a lot of young writers then a lot of young people learn for write but again i'll, I'll go i will get for take into account within nadia say that we no go take sierra leone as the yardstick for george the rest of africa okay we cannot do that sierra leone gets a unique challenge when it comes to literary um literary work uh, that, that, you know, it's just a unique challenge, I think. Sadly enough, we're we'll, we'll at this stage now. But social media, of course, not help we more. Social media just kind of compound the problem. In fact, make the problem, amplify the problem for we, because we get people in way, the mind very lazy anyway for things, and the academic situation really dire. So it makes the situation worse, what, what, much, much more worse when it comes to social media. Now, but um, now I'll try to wrap up quickly and come to uh, Mr. Jalo Jambore. What now you um, um, take on all of this? You see, I want to come with a solution outlook. Mm -hmm. And uh, my solution outlook is more personal. As a teacher, I have always loved being a teacher. I took the decision to become a teacher in 1975, and I have never regretted it, even though it's loaded with poverty. I don't mind. Okay? Knowledge is what makes the human race. The Europeans and other cultures where they advanced, and they advanced out of knowledge. Africa they get a knowledge crisis because of the Holocaust, 4,000 years of dismemberment of the continent, etc. And it's still they go on today. You mean 400 years? 4,000. 4,000. I did a research on that. Okay. 4,000. Not 400. That transatlantic slave trade, a later day, it started with the Arabs. When they begin invade Egypt and then place the day. Okay? You see, Sierra Leone in particular, now the greatest victim of the African Holocaust. If I can put it bluntly, most of us don't know who we are. Even the cultures they will they practice, we know they practice them with the essence of how we they make we as human beings. We they practice some with the essence of showing off the ego side. And uh, the ego side is always going with the material side of the human being. And because of that, we they lost a lot of things. We go make we innovative. When the human being is more concerned with how do I get an iPhone? How do I build a house? How do I this? You become a robot over time. Because people tailor you to walk and don't think. 
That's why we they misuse social media. Arms have been talking about alternative development. Well, of course, back in the 90s, we've been getting what you call Center for Alternative Development Strategies, women are be a member of. Now, some of them here will be in the examine. Now, we have social media. We have this crisis of reading in Sierra Leone. How do we compromise that? What do we do to move forward? This is what I'm thinking about, and this is what I've always been thinking about. And Aditiwe inspired me when I moved from Sierra Leone to Norway. Rather than going for an academic qualification, I went on to do information technology. Because I foresee there will come a time where we need information technology, and that's the now. Waiting Nadia, they do so, now the correct approach. I have three unpublished books. Why are they unpublished? Because I look and say, when you write this book, almost people, they buy them. Almost people, they read them. Whose impact? It's not about the money. It's about the impact. How we go ahead for change society. But if we use social media, when I need people and they appreciate, I think we go able to send the message further. Like the books that we uh, need on right, the books where arms are done right. If we get a team of people, we go see them, they make them books here into short, short play based on the theme and the purpose. We put them on social media, on YouTube, then thing and day. It will get far more impact. And it's going to cost less, of course. Because one of the things I will tell you for free is one of the books where they try for right, and that I will go, I will go on to publish it. A title, The Audacity of Change, The Queer Kingdom, and The Manor River Union. The purpose is to tell about our common bloodlines, our origin, who we are, why you have common surnames in Sierra Leone. And I want to to go against this pettiness we'll get who they use ethnicity for divide we say for we all not the same people. But from the time I start for do research on this book to now, I have spent so much, I think it's over five thousand dollars because all the knowledge about us is now in the archives of the Europe, Europeans. They lock it up, you have to pay to access them. I have spent so much and I'm ready to spend more. But what I believe that my own problem with this publication is, at the look and say, at the end of the day, if I'm going to publish this book, it's going to be too expensive that the common man not going to be able to afford them. And honestly, look at Amazon and then place them. They, when you see African writers, their books, then they're very expensive. Some books, they go up to $200. I cannot take $200 to buy a book. That will be very honest. So I they look at how we could make them cost effective and how we use social media for our publicize the message where the book intend. Because I always get a belief from what Albert Einstein say. You cannot solve a problem using the thinking that caused the problem. That's the problem we have in Sierra Leone particularly. We are going all over the place talking about quality education. But when you look at the education, it's the same old rubbish. Eurocentric, colonial mentality, master-servant education to train clerks and administrators. We know the giddy picking and chance for make the able to become innovative in the classroom. We're not the, the, the parents the chance for make them become participating in the educational process. We're not the equip the schools them. If they talk about quality education, you don't have a microscope at the university. These are all the things we'll get for look at. And that's where the alternative strategy comes in. What is the alternative strategy? People like us, we have spent a lot of time discussing today. How do we come in as a group? 
removed from all that political rigmarole and voting, I will come in together as a group. We begin empower ourselves for come out with things them where the masses go access. Because until and unless we change the perceptions and beliefs of society, society cannot change. Take the whole of Sierra Leone today, bring them to London. You take part of that population from London to Sierra Leone, five years down the line, Sierra Leone will be a modern state. Those, that part of London, where you have the Sierra Leoneans, will be a gutter state. Because the beliefs and the perceptions are not the issue. And some of us are here, I, I would say it, I'm not boasting about it. I have come to realize that I have a purpose of being here. And my purpose of being here, passing here, is not about money, it's about how I can help humanity. How are we going to make a difference, especially with a race that has been dismembered 4,000 years who don't even know who they are? How? So, my own final word is, and I've always said it in these discussions, we need to take some of this discussion beyond talking. I want people here and even that our Nigerian professor friend, let us come together and form something that we can empower each other, have a common platform, so we take this thing to the next level. Nadia has a platform. I have a program I'm fighting to build up. You know about it, uh, Yusuf, the Abole Education Project. You know about it. We can put some of this together. I can teach from Norway by distance learning. I can teach literature to any school in Sierra Leone. It's up to us to do it. We only need to know what they want us to teach, the books they want us to, to teach, we teach from professional level. Okay? Let the children understand what they need to understand. Let the mentality change. Let the belief change. Then the attitudes will change in society. I think that's my last word for today, sir. I don't hear you. You are, you are muted. Muted yeah, still. Muted. Okay, now, sorry. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, thank you very much. And thank you for, of course, everybody with um, the, the listen. Now, we all within at this platform, one way or the other, don't publish, don't write, don't do a lot of research, and we're all professionals all in real way, from young to the elders, the way they um, amongst we now. So, and I hope Simon and Seth, we all listen to this program, and all don't enjoy this program. The solution, now we all get for Fender solution day together um, when it comes to literature. The, the, uh, the elders before we, don't, we don't write literature. The African elders that were before we, the literature it did day for make we look at, for make we read and learn from them and make we get inspiration from them. And there are many of them who don't mention already and quite a few of them who are also serial. So we therefore, we therefore take the chance for make we um, engage in them books today and make we engage for by some of them books today because not for free, plenty of the writers they would write <laughs> plenty of writers actually die poor, just like Nadia said. Some commit suicide. Art is not a, it's not a picking business. To be an artist, you give your heart and your soul inside it. Um, so I hope that everything we don't discuss here so today will be a major inspiration for Una all, uh, for engage in African literature, and uh, and also for Una Wait to Tema for become aspiring writers. So Una said, good for right. I know say we not talk about we not talk about in terms of publishing because it's a very important area that one day when we talk of writers. Um, there was a time when we got the African Writers series. But today we get self-publishing. So for make you write your book and publish them, um, today you can do self-publishing. 
And with the kind of media we will get today, there's so much we can do. I can tell you, for example, Vicky Remoy, for example. Vicky Remoy, you don't write a lovely storybook. Um, you know, uh, um, uh, what is Aminata Loves Akara, for example. When a nice book where a lot of young people let they read left, right, and center. So, yes. after in fact, at the area where we don't even go to self, they pick in book them, books them for the small picking them. Because today, we need for even for start, for encourage picking them, for read a lot. There's small story book, then there's small, small story book, then will be pictures, then, and so on. We also get for taking into account that when we talk of African literature, let we not put them in the Eurocentric way. Because the Eurocentric way, and for say, you own the book now, you're able to pronounce every single word with the inside there, and then say, yeah, you know, wow, yeah, yes, yo, you don't pronounce no. We get for think that we get plenty picking in way words not to their strength for them images nine powerful for them some people are dyslexic so they're not able for read word just like that they go for take two three four times before they go through one sentence me now one pandemic for make i read one paragraph it will take me two three four times so make i read the paragraph then i just read for understand the paragraph it could take me another two three four for make i understand the paragraph and there's many many people in like me not of fulumuku but well, it's just that now we don't wait that one day. It takes me time to go through things. Now, for example, this book where I hold my hand now, so it is called Six Ensemble Plays. In this play, in this book, this is one of the plays them way Nisef don't write and publish. It's called Sweet Peter. Sweet Peter, the number four one like England, I also, and this particular play, now an epic on Sierra Leone from slavery right through to present. It's called Sweet Peter. Okay, so we already now so accomplish one way or the other, and we don't write things modern to the way they affect me today. As much as you get the older writers, the way we write things, we talk about the independence, the revolution times, and so on. We get a wide range of literature. Make we open our mind to that. Then one day we win our parents. Make we begin to introduce, we begin them to a lot of them, we books them, we, we writers then get. Yeah, we find the books we go interesting for them. One thing we are always detailed parents whenever um whenever i can go do performance as a storyteller and they tell them say please find a book you and you begin when i sit down when i read a chapter or two when i just discuss just discuss anything inside that african book day about anything let no prejudice no day. discuss anything about anything um because if we not engage and discuss all into the day, what will happen is the Europeans then they come, then they see what we get, they see the treasure panel, then they take her, they carry and go. And when they carry and go, they lock them. Boop. For make you go get a bag. Now, Mr. Boy, Jalo, Jambora, they talk about. For let you go get that, they you pay money you can in all day. So we get for begin look how we go engage and inspire the young ones like a Hamza. For make them say they go out now upline. Go do the research, write the things they know about the country, archive them, make we self archive them, and we get the opportunity for do that. And the literature, not only just they, just because only follow writing and a book. It will be in images, it will be in arts, it will be in so many different ways will be archived. And I know for say, Sierra Gem Media, for example, they do a lot for archive a lot of we literature. Well, now that we get um point um time for today i tell you plenty thank you we uh we we join we and i want for big up and marie winter and marie winter this one i for big you up thank you for we join we now so um oluwa to you call it oh <laughs> thank you so much oluwa to you call it for you to be here he says um can we have a reading can we have a reading comprehension in sorrow can we have a reading comprehension in sorrow? Hamza, that one is for you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, because I know that um, uh, Patriotic Advocacy Network, they've just launched something they call Brain of, um, of Sierra Leone, where they're engaging a lot of young people in reading. I know, Hamza, you know about that already. Yes, okay. I'm part of it. You are part of it. Okay, so we're doing that in Sierra Leone, where we're engaging a lot of young people in reading. And in also in delivery national storytelling festival also in a Sierra Leone day again to engage young people in oral literature. So some work is being done in Sierra Leone, but 
na de I go end them today. I've been look for a passage where we want for read for una um, before we go on this me play or so. But um, I can't find the exact passage. So maybe we will just left and this so. <laughs> if you had to the passage, go get the book. <laughs> I want to tell all my guests them plenty. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Boy Jalo Jamboya. Thank you very much, Mr. An uh, Madam Annie um, Domingo. Thank you very much, Nadia. And um, thank you very much, um, Hamza. And um, King Mufasa, I want to say something quickly before we go. Um, I just want to highlight something. As you make mention, say, Sierra J Media is being um, documenting a lot of our literature, is also open to. The playwriters then or book writers then waiting on the platform right now to see if you guys have anything that you think you want to dramatize within the concept of a play that can be acted by actors and actresses then feel free to reach out or if we can reach out to you guys then we can see how we can have a dialogue so that we'll be able to put some of your writers or writer skills into actual 3d picture image in terms of using the screen so we are open to all of those so basically it's just about changing the narrative so that we make sure that everything is being breaking down so that the lame man safe go for understand say this film way they watch now this person then writes the book of this film if you watch hollywood nollywood and possibly all the biggest film industries most of the films are replicas of stories being written by authors and you always see say this story was written by and then we can put a screenplay. So definitely it gives people the knowledge of the writers themselves, because if you like the film, you go on for know that write the book. And most times when you read the book and watch the film, it becomes part of you. Because I have experienced that over the years of reading books that I've watched the films or watch the film and come across the book, I want to read the book. So I have more knowledge of what I'm watching and what I'm reading. So as a media platform, we are quite open to all of those dialogue. And I believe it is possible we can find the money together, or if you get the money, we can we'll make it work. <laughs> thank so you thank you. We for Fendi money. Um, okay, thank you, Femi. Femi, say say your own last word before we close. Femi, yes. Okay. Hi, you got to Yes. So, um, hi, Yusufu. Um, quickly, I want both to get switching T boy to say just now. You know, um, it's important to tell our own stories. In Sarah J Media, we slogan, uh, um, you know, te we, de we tell our own stories. Um, African stories told by Africans. Yes, it is important. Um, I uh, make a reference to a, a, an English writer. You know, we write a book. He entitled the book, The Heart of Darkness. A guy called Joseph Conrad. You see... When Ingo Africa, he documented and described Africa as a heart of darkness. He don't get a lot of criticism over the years because of Dandy. Yeah. But that's his perception of where exactly. we come from. If we're not able for right, but we safe, other people in Goka write but we. And they will write <laughs> it in the way we some same we no lick. Yes, we know say Salonga problem with blackout. So if we want to tell the story of Salim being the heart of darkness, let us tell that story. Make somebody else we know experience some can't talk but Um, you know, we talk about languages, we talk about um dramatizing the stuff. When Shakespeare been the right, but who English man not been Sabigi the right. Hence why it was important for make drama been the tell the story also. So people understood the stories through drama. Because they're not been sabigi then right. I should say in the population the way they mean gets now this side of the Walusa we did so was less than one percent of people them who been sabigi then right. So for make then story then they go out and encourage people and for read and write and for inspire them for become future writers people took to the stage so you see how important it is so we're not gonna forget in english Creole, mindy fula or any other language we can just dramatize it it is very very important that we look at how we communicate our stories them for our future people um before we go yusufu i i, I want to tell you know all of our people um i want to tell them thank you but I make them member. Then last word, that's why they talk so. 
So, um, first hand, we get for communicate with stuff first hand. But it say it gets told and when me go tell me story to with man, with man can't tell Una the story. It's not the same because as you will say earlier on, even in literature, even in written thing, things get left out. They will leave out the stuff where they not think say suits them. So let's tell our own stories, and as T Boy say, we're happy to help you guys to put it into a, a, a production. And film it if necessary. Um, if you're interested, we have the tools. If you have the skills in writing, let's team together. Let's team up together and do something. Over to you, Sifu. Well, thank you so very much. Well, before we go, I want to read this excerpt way um, from this me play, Sweet Peter. It's a it's an epic play about a young man with a family we don't survive slavery all throughout to independence, colonialism, independence. And, um, and finally, this boy wrote this just as the dependence or colonialism time they on. So the boy is called Sweet Peter. He wrote this. He says, in Europe, time moves forward. But here in Freetown, that is only one of the moves time makes. It stops sometimes for years. It goes backwards or does a little dance and doesn't know which way it's going. We think time moves forward. Then we look to the side and see it doesn't move at all. We've been here before. We're not going backwards or forwards. We're just repeating things. Look. We are slaves again. That's one of my favorite passages in this play, Sweet Peter. Um, it's, in, it's, a, it's in an ensemble called Six Ensemble Plays for Young Actors. Look, we are slaves again. If we not take them as African people, look, we are slaves again. So we got to write our history. With that kind of thought, I want for left one for the night and say good night to Una all. I look forward for engage Una again. And thank you all so much to the wonderful panelists then for staying with me. Thank you, Hamza. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you, yeah. Annie. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Mr. Jalo Jambore. Thank you for having Kevin us. Pama and King Mufasa. Thank you all the all listeners out there. Good night, everybody. Good night. Now finish it. Now who's this? Yes, this is not time for all salon people and then party them. There, the media will be bringing you a variety of programs ranging from documentaries to discussions, interviews, news, views, sports, and entertainment. <laughs> Our programs will contain matters on development, governance, the economy, and issues that are of importance to Sierra Leone. So, no left BNO because we get Bebe Bebe program then like Salon Discussion, Meets the Ministers, the President's Hour, and the Gladi Gladi program, Look Me, I Look You. All this, they start soon now www.sarajemmedia.org. Now, who's term this? <laughs> We're passing by them products they are waiting and wait for do. Where the sun come out, then they go put this product directly under the sun. The sun now now they charge the panel. The energy from the sun is stored on this panel where you can now now host even term for can turn your light on. My name is Mariam Akamara. I'm the founder and director of Smiling Through Light.
Wait till that is. Ah, ha, ha. All right. Una cola waiting. Come on, Tenke. Not so. All man, you look now. Hey, but Tenke, who say you day? Then kind of meet the Paramount Chief. And the Paramount Chief say, well, if Una want but Tenke, Una get for put small cola for but Tenke. Yes. Aha. So then, we all want clean energy, correct? We all want solar light. And more importantly, we want solar light for we picking them for study. We want solar light, some of we want solar light just for an ordinary freezer. Are they, where are they free tongue? And know what's italic, where I not get light for just put food inside my freezer. Because it means every day, pass I go buy fresh food. If I don't cut, cut the fish, before they put a light, not day, the fish don't boil. Not so? If it, when, you, when you smoke the fish, chef, fly down, sit down, and na tumbu the come not so? But, we but ten k don't day. You get a light day. When net come, you put your freezer on with that solar day. Definitely it go work. When you picking one for study, it like you know for put the big lights on. You picking it go sit down, it go study fine. Because when picking the study on the light, we not good in yai. Not so right. And we all one day we picking a healthy, smiling through light, solar energy. But ten k is about that. It's about health. It's also about wealth. As many other things as Mariam Agefo can explain to her. So, me, not stranger, but today, me, I talk and say, I did go inside my belly, make me burn me inside Lushara, make me take me as soon as I'm picking. Case closed. Now, me done so. This is such an exciting time for us and um, we've just launched a program called Shining a Light on Kamakue and Lonsao. So we basically got some a grant from which is a comic relief and dipid grant under the Common Ground Initiative and this particular grant is managed by Afford UK. So Shining a Light on Kamakue and Lonsao, it's all around job creation, income opportunities, getting the product in. Um, so a couple of the activities that we're doing within this project is that we're recruiting nine staff in Sierra Leone. So we're recruiting three staff in Freetown, three in Kamakue, three in Lonsao. We're opening three offices in Freetown, Kamakue and Lonsao. We're doing two community awareness events which we held last week Thursday and Friday. So we had this whole big road trip and we're doing the community activities and we're using storytelling. So working with Mr. Yusuf Ujalo, the Cow Footprints. Um, so the project is in partnership with the Mambina Cultural and Community Project. And we're using storytelling because even as a company, I don't want people to just get the products. I really want people to understand that. I'm using the product and these are the benefits of it. So we're doing a lot of educational work within communities, training them on how the products work, why they should be using the product. You know, we always tell them that light is good for your health, it's good for your education, it's good for your business because of loads of different reasons. So it's a really exciting project. Uh, as a professional storyteller, I am here um, to, to, to kind of like um, engineer a story within the whole project itself. If you've ever been up country in Sierra Leone here, Firefly is very, very common here at night. But not many people have actually noted how the Firefly actually gives it light. In the daytime, it's stationary. It's, in fact, it's hidden in the daytime, absorbing the heat from the sun. And then at night, the Firefly energizes itself and literally just gives itself fire, light, in order to light its way around. That gives the Firefly independence, that gives the Firefly um, the ability to operate when many other um, living organisms probably aren't operating at all. And, and just those two basic principles are important for our women, whereby through working with Smiling Through Light, um, you know, selling, the, selling the, the, uh, the, 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 the solar lights, they're able to generate income for themselves. Through that income, they're able to feed their families and they're able to, um, to, uh, to, to kind of get some kind of economic independence. Up country, when you go to school and you have to study at night, you have to use what you call Bengbe lamp. 
Now, if, if you've been in Sierra Leone, you ever use what we call bengbe lamp, which is like a uh, just like an empty milk tin with a with with, um, with 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 a twig in it, and then we put kerosene in that, and you study with that with a kind of firelight. Literally, you get black nostrils, to put it very mildly. But also, it it makes the young people ill. Bringing in solar light, like smiling through light is bringing, bringing in, will help a lot of young people to study efficiently at night, but also to study and, um, and get a better health, you know, um, while they're studying at night. So for me, using storytelling and using the firefly as, um, as, a, as a metaphor to, uh, to illustrate the use of solar energy, I think it's just very, very effective. It is within the cultural context of the people and they just never will forget what Smiling Through Life is all about. The problem we're trying to solve is really to make sure people are using clean, sustainable and reliable products. And why is this? Because only 13% of our population have access to electricity. So that means only 13% of the population have access to the grid. And once you don't, people now rely on different lighting options. So, for example, people would use kerosene to light up their homes, they would use candles, they would use pan lamp, and these are all really dangerous. The good thing with solar products is that we're in a country where we have unlimited amount of sun. You're getting free light, basically. So we want people to really have access to clean energy. My name is Madam Salema Tukamara. Me na chair lady for the market women Marampa chiefdom and the trade where they do na lapa business at the day with. The fuel system, it can short change short in the light because you know they get light free as how the light been the run through day. And automatically, if they count solar system na low sir, I no be able to tell you na lie. We they very happy because at times we can get breakdown from the machine where the light for we. And when the machine break down, automatically you pick in there, then small, small, small lights they will go make it a bulb, they're not going to see fine. But if we get solar, the cable uh, 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 assist will pick in there for let them uh, uh, read uh, in a net for study. It's not easy for living and loss. If the job, although the job don't begin calm, but <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, say, 15% uh, uh, of people are in Alosa, they don't get. No, it's not possible yet. Mama, this program where they try for bring calm, we're really happy about that. Because now woman will get respect for positive. You can't hire now with this project for can help Marampa achieve them. I say automatically we're ready for work with you. You get a plan for in, in, in hometown. It will not go ever let her down. Shine the light, smiling through light. I am Yusuf Ujalo, the cowfoot prince. And the firefly, it came like this. Na panke, 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 yantenga moloa. Ah, guda na yantenga moloa baba horimbing. Shining a light, smiling through. When I was a kid growing up in Sierra Leone, my neighbor had a small TV. The television was beaming these images about farming, war, about diseases. There was a silent majority suffering. I am fed up with that kind of news. We can use culture and art to change mind and hearts and inspire action. <laughs>
I was here as a student. And of course, Charlie was my teacher. I've asked him to join me on the journey to create a major new play to offer hope to our people. We want to uplift our nation, leave legacy for our children. We are talking about national pride. This is big, man. This has great magnitude. Sometimes I feel afraid. I feel terrified when I think of the project. Tito! What are they, Tito? We are nowhere near what you want for the. I want this. I want it. I want it. I want this thing for succeed, Koji. Please, please, stay and die. Is this a curse or what? These are the things that have wrecked this country. We need to move this nation forward. We're going to need to fight a better future. I can call him the second to last project. We died at the last. I guess I shot my brother. Silverstone Beach. People killing, people dying. Children hurting, hear them crying. You can practice what you preach. Or would you turn the other cheek? Father, 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 help us. Send some guidance from above. People got me, got me questioning. Where is the love? Killing up my people, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's bless one another, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's help one another. I think I, I can't believe. Yeah. What's in me? I don't see this kind of thing really happen. This not for be education opportunity. Now in the need, let me learn for the share, not to attend for the greed. You see this life they live, oh. Is it a real lose or we know? Stop killing one another. Let's stand together, eh, yeah. Stop playing the hero, looking at each other like a zero. On the block with the sea, money they pan make every day pan pre, eh, yeah. Our life be they took our boys, they take our joy, take our joy. This is the time we stop now, crime. Don't blind by this life, your future. Stop the stabbing, stop the killing. Let's love one another. Peace. Where is I see fighting every day, I see dying every day Why don't we help each other and pave the way for a better life A life that we all deserve instead of killing each other Why don't we preserve? So you wanna be a bad man, he's gonna be a badder man You got a big knife, he's gonna get a bigger knife Our people suffered for years in chains Now we turn on each other, cut, cut for gains For the ones that send the use to kill themselves You pretend to be a father figure but only care for yourself You are nothing but the flesh of the devil Your evil, low life on another level Think about the mothers and the pain they go through You don't care for these kids, they mean nothing to you But Kama Kama only knows the boomer and maneuver One day, the green people will be your remover This hell of the range, ranting up some sanctimonious food This is poetic verses, ruminate a prophecy Given to a sentient dude So I say it's as it is for you to listen and the juice The wisdom that's gonna liberate and galvanize you Under the sun, ain't nothing new That for black and black crimes and breaking news Under the sun, ain't nothing you new gotta stay. Still at home, got 
don't lift me up, but me hats, then I grind. You will never go far if you don't know where you're from. So I don't do it for myself, I'ma do it for the young. Please tell my brothers, let's do it for the youngest. Why spend a bag on a jumper? Back where you're from, people dying with hunger. With people then they suffer. You then I yag, you the bluff, it's copper. Your game need for change. Let me not get up. Where's the love? Where's the love, yo? Where's the love? I see. Where is the love? Little youth, let's take time. Stop all the knife and the gun crime. Think of the future. Paint that picture. Get a youth in the future. Peace gonna rain on me. Peace gonna rain on me. Yeah, yeah. Let's stop the violence and come together. Reads of knives and guns and bomb, let's be together. With peace and love, golden hopes, good storm and weather. See what is going on. Where is the Man, them get neff. If you live by the neff, you go suffer. You know, get sense. You know, sabi say neff not for butter. Stabbing guys, yeah, that's uncool. When it comes to knives, yeah, I'm anti. What happened to fighting guys with your hands, G? When you stab a man, it's not one man you stab. Just remember that you stab a whole family. People killing, people dying. Children hurt and hear them crying. You can practice what you preach, or you will turn the other cheek. Father, 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 help. 